um, now the recording is in progress. So that now we do is that we take the lectures and we use it also as learning materials. So with this, uh, I just give the, the award to Boris and let's have a great training of trainers, Boris. Thank you very much, Maria Alejandra. And um, I will be, my name is Boris Tanazor from Platforma. Uh, I am an advisor uh, at the Platforma Consortium and also at CMR, which is hosting our Platforma project. Uh, and I will be your facilitator for today. Uh, I will guide you through the, through the agenda of the day uh, and help you orient yourself in, the, in our program. We have ahead of ourselves a program which is divided into two half days. So today we have a, a virtual training. We have a start for the training of the training of trainers module developed by Platforma together with UCLG Learning uh, with support of uh, distinguished experts in the field. Uh, and after having conducted pilot trainings to test the module, to see how it works with our audiences, with UCLG Africa, with Merco Ciudades, with UCLG ASPAC, we have now finally come to the point that we can use the training and, and do the training for our European friends, for CMR and European partners. It will be an opportunity for you to experience the module, to become trainers in the future and to disseminate the knowledge that is assembled in the materials. I'm sure you will have fun. It's interactive, it's entertaining, it's pedagogical. Uh, you will uh, meet some theory, you will meet some practical examples, uh, you will do some instructional games, uh, all in the context of bringing the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and its 17 Sustainable Development Goals into our daily context of decentralized development cooperation. So welcome, uh, dear participants, welcome friends, uh, welcome familiar fa faces. Uh, I would like to give the floor to a few colleagues to do a real opening remarks, who will tell you a little bit about the framing and about the module. And our opening speakers will be Marlene Simeon, the director of Platforma, then Jesse Post, the coordinator of the Secretariat of the Capacity and Institutional Building Working Group of UCLG, and of course, Sarah Höflich, the director of UCLG Learning. So I would like to start the event and give the floor to Marlene Simeon, director of Platforma, for opening remarks. Thank you very much, uh, Boris and, and Maria Alejandra. It's a, it's a pleasure, actually, to open this session. Uh, you know that, uh, yes, we had this idea of, uh, of the module um, like a few years ago now, almost four years ago or something like that, uh, where we, we, we thought it would be a, a great idea on how to link our agenda, um, decentralized cooperation, and the SDGs also to revive our decentralized cooperation. No? So we have been for years working in decentralized cooperation, but how to think differently, to be more on an equal uh, partnership as well with our partners from outside the EU and rethink how we work. And we saw that the SDG uh, would be one of these common language that could help also uh yes rephrase or or revive the way we are doing our decentralized cooperation it's a real pleasure thank you so much to the uclg team actually we believed in this crazy crazy idea and uh and now it's done it's a it's a nice uh, game a nice training uh they have and and with the team of platforma also uh been doing uh, this training to the, the different sections of uclg uh, if i'm not wrong so uclg africa uclg aspect uh latin america america see you that is and also with mewa uh last week you know just uh in presence so it was really nice i i followed on twitter uh but it's really nice to see how it was spread and and the idea is really not to keep it as a european model it was really to do it a global module uh, also to have other perspective because you know that there are also south-south cooperation or other uh, types of, of cooperations that were very interesting to develop this uh, this model now we see with uh, the news as well that uh, more and more cooperation partnerships are are crucial in those times of, of crisis of war as well uh, we can see that one of, uh, of the practical solutions that city to city and, uh, cities and regions have put in place is really to increase their cooperation. Uh, so I think 
it's really uh, right on time to have this training of trainers uh, for you to be able to train your own members or your partners on how to integrate the SDGs in uh, your decentralized cooperation. It's a pleasure also to, to join up not only with UCLG, but with uh, CIB, <laughs> so the CIB branch of, of UCLG. Uh, also, there is a Cités Unies France, CUF, that has developed uh, the module for some French municipalities. So I think this is something that is only starting at the end, it's been a year that you are giving this training, but it's really the beginning of a, of a journey. Uh, so thank you so much for being here. Uh, you know that the SDGs are also the basis of our multi-annual strategy as, a, as CMR, as the Council of European Municipalities and Regions. So we will certainly continue to develop uh, those uh, training and to offer you those uh, possibility for training. A last thank to my colleague Eva as well. I don't know where she is but uh, she is also one of the, the, the main organizer. Uh, she's in orange, of course, <laughs> but one of the main organizer of, uh, of the session today. So thank you and enjoy this, uh, this journey uh, and, and uh, really pleased to see you as a, as a future trainer for this module. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Marlene, for the warm welcome uh, and uh, our next speaker for the welcome opening is Jesse Post from the CIB Working Group. And we definitely wanted to use this opportunity to join forces with you at this opportunity so that, uh, we, so that we make sure that one plus one equals three and we have a good outcome of the training, but also use it as a springboard to the upcoming meeting of the CIB Working Group. So Jesse, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Boris, and thank you, Marlene, for your encouraging uh, opening words. Uh, it, it is also my pleasure to be here with all of you. It's nice to see both uh, European cities and associations uh, on the call, but also partners uh, from all around the world who will indeed also join us in person next week uh, in Belgium. So that's really exciting. Uh, I'm Jesse Post, and as was announced already, I coordinate the Secretariat of the Capacity and Institution Building Working Group, which is a technical platform of practitioners uh, working at local government associations or cities on international cooperation. So if you're not part of it yet, it's probably also your platform, uh, because I, I realize you are probably all doing that. It's a dynamic and active working group um, and we meet in person once a year. Well, we haven't actually for two uh, COVID years, but we are meeting next week. And we wanted to use the opportunity to also organize this training of trainers um, for the European network and for partners. Uh, because it also gives us an opportunity to, to hear from practitioners from other parts of the world uh, who are in Europe with us, uh, how they reflect on, on the European decentralized cooperation and maybe see how we together can make it stronger. So here we are. Thanks a lot for joining us. Um, you are about to become trainers on SDGs and decentralized cooperation, if you aren't already. Um, and the training is very much in line with the main objective of CIB, in fact, which is to advance the effectiveness and quality of international policies and programs. We try to connect what happens on the ground, in the field, um, in capacity building programs, to what is mentioned in international agendas and policies, and the other way around. How do international agendas uh, work out in reality and how do local governments and international cooperation help to achieve these sometimes abstract agendas and where do we encounter obstacles in implementation. We bring usually also to UCLG concrete examples, opportunities and difficulties from development cooperation at the local level to headquarters of international organizations of national governments and donors where professionals often work on a much more abstract level and sometimes a bit far away from reality. And by bringing the two worlds closer, we should be able to then hopefully move quicker on agendas such as the SDGs, which are already, we're already uh, more than halfway uh, in the time. And by training uh, yourselves on how to effectively connect actual decentralized cooperation to the SDGs, you can also contribute to this larger objective. 
and make you and at the same time make your daily work more effective as well. Um, and and hopefully you also train your own colleagues so that this is a pay it forward uh, principle. We wish you good luck today and next week and lots of fun during the training as well and uh, in the weeks and years to come. Uh, I now give back the floor to Boris. Thank you very much, Jesse, for the opening words, for the warm word, but also to bringing the, the perspective of the working group and actually the meeting of practitioners that can really relate their own daily work to also to the content of the module. So I think uh, this was the main reason and main expectation from our side to make it useful so for somebody for whom it will be useful in uh, everyday life. Uh, and our last opening speaker will be Sarah Höfli, uh, the Director of Learning at UCLG. Uh, and I hopefully she, why Sarah, why learning by UCLG? This module is not really standalone. It's the module number four of a series of training modules and of a series of a, actually a training efforts made by UCLG Learning. So uh, I think Sarah will be the one to give us the frame uh, to set this together into the whole work of UCLG and how we try to link and build capacities of, of members of UCLG, not only Europeans, but all around the world. Sarah, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Boris. I had a little crash down of my internet. I hope you hear me. <laughs> okay, because now I'm yes. talking through the phone. Um, yeah, indeed, it is uh, it is true. And uh, first, it's a pleasure to have all of you here um, to, to look and to commit to become trainer or facilitator of focal point, no? because of course, this is what we do today, even in a very dense version, we, we try that uh, decentralized cooperation works in the future more connected and that this global agenda, the SDG, is useful, inspiring and also interesting because all the work in the end is very connected through this SDG. And as Boris just said, this is a fourth of, um, of four modules that all deal on localizing. So the first is introduction, the second is strategic planning, the third reporting and monitoring, and now cooperation. So as many of you know, and you, many of you also through the CIB are engaged and the through platformer and CMA, CMR are engaged in reporting in VLR, in HLPF. So many of you know the uh, SDG as an as a, um, interesting framework to report, to align the activities. But for cooperation, it is especially interesting because it also uh, gives the possibility to, to cooperate between partners bilaterally, but at the same time be seen by many. So you, as you align and as you uh, focus on certain uh, SDG, you will see that there are others and it opens up into a quite an interesting um, uh, umbrella for partners to connect to projects. And this is one of the points we have always detected that decentralized cooperation is a very important element, but often not seen uh, and, in, and not used with all the energy and the power it definitely has. So uh, we hope that after this training, you will feel this power and, and energy connecting um, SDG and decentralized cooperation and your own activities and also the activities <laughs> rolling out with all the partners. So. Here in the picture, you can see we, we uh, um, transmit this through a bicycle because we are on the move, on the move to a better world, on the move to the SDG. And the bicycle has uh, elements that we all will, um, that are all addressed in our module. The module has been supported and written up by Sogen Moodley. I hope he will join us in the last hour. And uh, we will uh, not address everything, but you have, of course, the opportunity to look at it. It is really done for trainers. So it is a hands-on work and hands-on writing. If we look in the next slide, we can see the, the chapters of the module, how they unfold. So we have um, six chapters and all the chapters are addressing the elements of the bicycle. 
So uh, if you see, we have, of course, uh, in this uh, training for you, we have been a little bit shorter because we assume that you might already know many contextual elements. You also uh, know well the work of UCLG and of Platforma on the advocacy. So we have been a little bit shorter on these parts. Uh, the same when you look at, at policy uh, program, uh, project design, also here we are a little bit shorter because we know you, um, not everybody personally, but we know you are all very experienced, you have a lot to do, and so we, uh, CIB and Platforma have been a little bit deciding that we emphasize in, in certain aspects. But you will, of course, get a glimpse of everything, and um, in the practice, uh, we will stress a lot on partnership. We also will stress on communication, on this intercultural uh, aspects of the communications entail and we, uh, uh, all project management entails. And of course, uh, also on the future, we look to, as Marlene said, uh, very right, that the partnerships uh, of decentralized cooperation are long lasting partnerships. So they can have many shapes and uh, that are particular strengths that, that, which we can look at. And also when looking into the future and our agenda or your agenda, uh, mainly work more connected, use uh, these partnerships that are only sustaining because you have communication around it. So how can this be strengthened? And this will probably then work back uh, to UCLG platform and CIB to help on this. So this is a little bit for today and maybe what are the, uh, the module has, has always, as Boris already said, it has lectures, it has exercises. These are now well known because we are, even we are all tired of the Zoom meetings and the long uh, sessions online. We try to make it interactive as possible. And so that you always uh, bring also your own knowledge right in front um, in any training, because of course, only applying what you know, you will be a, a good trainer. So you will not just repeat, but have all the contents are personalized. And of course, uh, this is a very special in in our in our um, in our training cycle. Maybe a last point, I would also say what other expectations we have, uh, of course, for CIB and Platforma, now it's crucial later to see if you want to do activities, what are your intentions um, to apply, what you learn. But uh, for us also, it's, it's important we have a perspective of Europe. And here we have a consultant also with us, Juan Cortes, he is joining us. And he will listen carefully uh, on this particular perspective of Europe, because Marlene said it, we didn't want to do the module only European, and it is not. We have, uh, I mean, it was written by a South African, but we, we have now gone through the regions and we have written up uh, what perspective are their starting points. So what are their main intentions, their futures, their dreams, and their possibilities. And we, we think that it's also important we do this for Europe. So it is, um, that's why we are very happy to have uh, Joan Cortes joining us. And any of you, please, uh, you will see now how this training works. We will mainly engage the participant also as trainers. And between today and next Monday, when um, next Tuesday, when the um, uh, on-site training is, you can also think how you be more engage into, into the training, maybe with a more active role. So we are very open to this. And Maria Alejandra, who has been coordinating from our side the training and Fernando and myself, we are open to, uh, to brief any speaker if you see the need. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sarah, for your uh, very rich introduction, but also to your excellent timing because it's 14.20 and according to our agenda, we should proceed to the next part of the training. Uh, we start with something which was probably the most iconic exercise um, or question in, this, in, this whole, in the whole preparation of the module because we realized that decentralized development cooperation is something which is international, multicultural, multi-stakeholder, and it takes different forms and different ways in different countries, different examples or different programs or, or projects. So the warm-up exercise and warm-up contribution for this module 
will be by Maria Alejandra Rico, who will tell us something about what is decentralized cooperation. Maria Alejandra, please. Thank you, Boris, and thank you all. Uh, so I, I will ask my colleague Claudia to please. Uh, now we're going to share what we what we sent you and that you kindly uh, uh, fill out for us. So, so Claudia, if you can maybe go to the map, please. Okay. So here you see a bunch of names. Now we are concentrated in Europe. I'm not gonna pass by all the names that are here as we usually do because we want, and we are gonna meet in person. So this warming up exercise is just for you to see how we are connected from Europe, but how we are seeing Europe also from the outside and how this decentralized cooperation that we all work in is actually linking us together to work towards, uh, towards a common goal. And the common goal that we have here is the SDGs. So this kind of like for me, every single time we do this exercise, which is actually a way for you to actually get into mural as the first time and, and kind of introduce yourself into this mural virtual part. What I like the most is because it reflects that we are all together, maybe we are, we can be a little bit more distance, but we all are, are right together and we are working for a common purpose. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna uh, stop here for the map. And I, I, I want to go to the, to the second part that we asked you, and it was regarding what was the centralized cooperation for you. We do know that there is a lot of uh, different uh, concepts or different, uh, I don't know, literature that says uh, different meanings on the centralized cooperation. But what is interesting here is to see how actually you did see it. So we divided into four main things, uh, and I wanted to just to share with you uh, these things that you actually share with us. So, so first of all, uh, in the in the in the upper part, you have uh, some definitions that you said: the change of good practice in local services and policies, uh, different from traditional NGOs. Uh, one that I really like is uh, inspiration for my job, which I think is is very nice. International cooperation at local level, which certainly is cooperation at ground level, has to be a lot uh, that answer with the other. Uh, partners exchanging knowledge and efforts for common goals, which was what I was mentioning before, uh, for sure partnership and building better futures worldwide. So it seems like we do all have pretty much a, a definition of what the centralized cooperation is. But also interesting enough was to see that you are also already mentioning some of the um, of the ways in which the centralized cooperation develops. Uh, some of the methodologies and typologies are also included here. So you are included, the technical assistance between cities, the uh, P2P cooperation, city to city cooperation, the way that exchange and learning is so important. So this also you're gonna be seeing during the, during, during the, the, the training of trainers and in the module in the part of, the, of chapter three. So it, it was very interesting for us to see. So the, 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 fourth, the third part that I wanted to mention and that I group up with this decentralized uh, cooperation definition that you had uh, was referring also to the, to the topics that we, uh, or that you in Europe and the people that see you from outside that you are working with. So, so you, we can see that you are working in climate, we're working in feminism and, and in created networks, civil servants, for sure, 2030 agenda, cooperation to advance democracy, uh, practical solution, local democracy is also, uh, it's also there. Uh, this part of hands-on solutions, I will, I will put it uh, up, uh, up, but I think it's also important. And the final part that I thought that it was very interesting, it was the part on, on, on these, uh, these, these values or these principles, those, those values that you, that you mentioned there are very similar to the, actually to the principles of the centralized cooperation that we all share and that we are willing to, to push forward. And among of them, for for sure is uh, solidarity, collaboration, trust, inclusivity, leaving no one behind, which is of course uh, related also to the 2030 agenda, being as a global movement. So it means that we are in this SDG 17 
vibe and equality and development as freedom. So you are going to see this now uh, after, after I finish this, that uh, the definitions and also the principles are very related with uh, the knowledge that you already shared with us. So, so I thought it was, a, it was a very good way of getting to know each other. I know you're not talking, I'm just the one that is talking now, but you're gonna be have enough time to, to, to share uh, among yourselves. So I'm, I'm stopping here for this, for this um, summary of the exercise and I give the word to, back to you, Boris, thank you. I think you're muted. And unmuted and unmuted. Thank you very much uh, for this introduction. And I see that already everybody has a certain grasp of what is decentralized cooperation for them. Uh, because the, the experience may be unique, might be personal, might depend on your location, on the way you work, on the type of partners you work with, on the topics you work on. Uh, so it can be really a wide encompassing uh, definition of something. Um, and uh, I think what we have foreseen now is a short quiz to test an understanding and, and your knowledge so that we have an introductory warm up quiz uh, on what is decentralized cooperation and what is the European approach? Are we going to, it's Maria Alejandra. Oh, we're, we're passing the quiz for next, for the, for the seventh. Sorry. For the seventh, okay, okay. <laughs> so we move the quiz for the seventh, excellent. Uh, so we'll, you will uh, then receive a little bit of homework at the end of today's exercise, uh, and you will be invited to do a short reading for the next uh, uh, round of the training where a quick test will be done. So thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, just in case somebody wanted to make a short comment, somebody would like to ask a question, please don't hesitate to raise your hand uh, or ask your question in the chat. We will try to uh, mediate these questions also to the speaker or to the moderators of the day as necessary. So please bear in mind, this is an uh, interactive exercise, an interactive course, and you're welcome to raise your hand, to contribute, to speak, to comment, uh, so that we also can hear how this course and these topics resonate in your own work and in your own uh, everyday reality of your life. Uh, so we can uh, then uh, proceed to the next step of the, of the program, and that is about unpacking decentralized cooperation in Europe. Uh, we will have a lecture, uh, which is a very short lecture. It's really 10 minutes, so it's more of a quick uh, introduction, but I'm sure it will be excellent because it will be done by our colleague, Amadine Sabourin, Policy and Advocacy Officer of Platforma. And she will speak about decentralized cooperation as a way forward in policy development and specifically about the European perspective of development policy. Amandine, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Boris. A good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here and actually an honor to deliver this first keynote today, this first, first uh, lecture. Um, so as uh, Boris was mentioning, we will address decentralized cooperation as a way forward in policy development, especially through the European perspective. Um, as you know, maybe we can run the, the PowerPoint presentation. Thank you so much. Um, the centralized cooperation's history, evolution, and definition demonstrate how key this tool is for policy development. Um, and if we refer to the Agenda 2030, for instance, the OECD showed already that 60% of the 179 uh, targets uh, will be achieved if they are tackled at local level. In that context, peer-to-peer -peer relationships for knowledge, for innovation, for action are a very important tool that that can structure your international policy. So today we are all quite well uh, aware of this. Um, plus the syllabus made by UCLG Learning and Platform is quite um, complete, comprehensive and bravo and thank you to all of those who contributed to this. Uh, so I will rather insist on the European reference, uh, the European vision and perspective on decentralized cooperation. It seems like a good uh, starting point uh, for the, the regional reflections that will be made during this uh, training. Um, so if we uh, uh, we throw out Europe, one, uh, one uh, 
important fact is that uh, decentralized cooperation entails different realities. The training module proposed the following definition and agreed actually uh, uh, on the following definition, the one you, you see, uh, which offers a broad perspective and adapts to most of the realities. Um, decentralized cooperation is hence considered as development cooperation between local and regional governments and their associations acting across borders to mutually reinforce their capacities and to involve economic and social actors at local and regional level to address development challenges. Very broad and comprehensive definition, but let's dig a little bit into the variety of definitions throughout Europe. Uh, recently at Platforma, we launched a survey among the partners of the coalition. Um, one of my colleagues, uh, Pablo, is in charge of this and is currently analyzing the data collected. Um, some quick hints um, show actually how various the situation of decentralized cooperation is throughout Europe. So in Italy, for instance, uh, our partner uh, mentioned that uh, by law, uh, we talk about um, development cooperation and not anymore about decentralized cooperation. And the key actors are NGOs and not local authorities, which is interesting. In Spain, for instance, the cooperation uh, is uh, the decentralized cooperation um, answers the definition of the, the I'm sorry, I noted the definition in Spanish. So the, 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 the decentralized cooperation is actually the cooperation led by the different um, comunidades, so the regions, uh, comunidades autonomas, and the local entities, which are the diputaciones, the provinces, uh, but also the municipalities. In Belgium, our partners refer to decentralized cooperation as all forms of cooperation between Belgium, local authorities, intermunicipal, organizations and their associations and their partners in the global south. Sometimes development cooperation in Belgium also refers to, uh, oh, sorry, uh, on provincial and regional level is also included when talking about decentralized cooperation. And the, to uh, um, mention another one, last one, uh, the case of France brings an interesting situation because it offers a legal framework uh, to local and regional governments who want to get uh, involved internationally, no matter what their size is, um, which include, includes small scale projects. Um, two different expressions in the French cases, case, sorry, uh, allowed to talk about international activities of local and regional governments. First, the decentralized cooperation itself. So since 1992, there is a law defining the corporations uh, decentralized cooperation as cooperations uh, among uh, with foreign local and regional governments based on memorandum of understandings or convention uh, conventions sorry signed uh, by both parts. Um, the second expression we refer to is the external action of local and regional governments. Uh, since two laws adopted uh, more recently in 2007 and 2014, the scope of action has been broadened to also include unilateral actions of local and regional governance for economic development, for instance, or to allow grants, uh, etc. And to include also actions led in the context of a network of local and regional governments or an association. Um, Behind this diversity of realities and definitions of decentralized cooperation, some important principles, and that leads us to the second slide, uh, are shared among decentralized cooperation stakeholders. And this slide shows actually um, that we uh, agree and uh, present, sorry, um, five, uh, five of them. So the reciprocity and horizontal relations would be the first one. Then the proximity and the participation, uh, second principle. Uh, the third principles are uh, under the multi-stakeholder and multi-level geographical governance, which is key in the, to lead the partnership um, between actors. And then the fourth principle would be the geographical alliance based on exchange and mutual learning. And the fifth one, the greater possibilities for solidarity. Um, my third point, 
would re, uh, I will come to the the evolution so of the history the history kind of uh, the decentralized cooperation the manual of the module gives an excellent overview of the history which is summarized here uh, and of the evolution of decentralized cooperation from twinning to technical uh, exchange um, again going back to a, a case like the French case, for instance, can help to seize the, this evolution. So first, um, the, twin, the, the international, the centralized cooperation was born with a humanitarian assistance at local level, from local level, to help a neighbor or a friend, uh, like we saw between French uh, city, local governments and Romanian local governments, for instance, is in the 90s or in the 80s and 90s, the same with the Polish ones. Um, and then from that humanitarian aid or uh, exchange um, that first developed, um, were launched some, some cultural exchanges were launched to know each other better. Um, the local governments initiated, for instance, exchanges of artistic groups or paid for internship or grant stipends for students to come study in France. Now it's more about technical exchange. Uh, like, for instance, if we talk about concrete examples, uh, the municipality of Lille works with Saint Louis du Senegal on water and sanitation and also education to development, um, also through an NGO. In Poland, there is a big project run by the French uh, local and regional government that encourages actually decentralized cooperation uh, on sustainable cities, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I would like to spend one minute uh, maybe on the an additional evolution, like uh, and to, to bring up some interest, some reflections on how decentralized cooperation is encouraged, managed, or coordinated uh, at national level or from the national level. Um, we mentioned, or I mentioned already, that some laws uh, include decentralized cooperation and uh, and offers this possibility uh, legally to. Uh, the, the local and regional government off, offers a framework uh, to this possibility for local and regional governments. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of France is also particularly involved in coordinating two platforms where local and regional governments are invited to participate. It's called the National Committee for Decentralized Cooperation, um, which actually um, happens twice or three times a year even. Uh, and then there is a broader committee, which, called, which is called the Interministerial Committee for Cooperation and International Solidarity, which is the broader um, decision-making um, committee uh, for cooperation and development, where local and regional governments are invited as well to share their challenges and interact with the, the other stakeholders. Then the second point would be to uh, reflect on the financial mechanisms. Um, this is also interesting because the situation is really various and different from one country to another in Europe. Uh, but in France, for instance, uh, decentralized cooperation is financed through in the own resources of local region governments, but also uh, through uh, grants offered annually through a call by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And a third mechanism is interesting. It's that the ministry, uh, the government of France offers an incentive. Um, the local and regional governments are uh, allowed to take up to 1% of their budget uh, to run some projects of decentralized cooperation in the field of water, energy, transport, and waste. And this is a real, incentive offered by the, the national level to the towards the local governments for their international solidarity activities. Last but not least on this, what are the roles, what is the role, sorry, of the national associations in that? So in that, in that uh, context, uh, they have a key uh, role to play for coordination and also for giving an impulse uh, to increase the activities of decentralized cooperation. Um, and, uh, and the third point is also that they have a very important role to play towards the, uh, the government as um, 
to lobby towards the, the government, the French government. And in France, there are two associations. Um, one is, uh, uh, yeah, two associations that uh, do that uh, jointly. Um, last point, and uh, I will, is I, I, on which I will I would like to uh, to uh, to come back is the uh, decentralized cooperation at European level. So more broadly towards the EU institutions. So uh, what is the, the situation of decentralized cooperation? We saw that uh, decentralized cooperation has been adapting to the new development narratives with the Agenda 2030, with the SDGs as the key roadmap uh, and a good methodology used to, uh, thank you, <laughs> used to mobilize stakeholders and actions. Um, local and regional governments have also uh, the opportunity to renew their political commitment to development and to the way in which they plan, work, implement, and report their development and uh, cooperation strategies. This process is supported and sustained by networks and partnerships. Um, but uh, before going further uh, and uh, jump into the, the analogy of a bicycle for the next uh, session, um, where we, we, I will mention the, the relationship between uh, the EU level and decentralized cooperation. And it's the last point. Thank you, Boris. Um, Boris is telling me I have two minutes. Uh, institutionally, the role of local authorities is acknowledged since the European Commission's 2013 communication on empowering local authorities in partner countries for enhanced governance and more effective development outcomes. So the communication speaks about good governance at local level that is necessary to achieve sustainable development and equ equitable outcomes. It creates the conditions for inclusive, responsive, and effective development processes. And Platforma was created before that in that stream of ideas. In, in 2008, Platforma, the coalition Platforma, uh, was created to express the voice of local and regional governments and their associations and networks. Um, regarding decentralized cooperation, including this variety of uh, realities. It signed, a platform signed in 2015, among other organizations like UCLG, um, a political partnership with the European Commission in that regard, which is being renewed this year. Decentralized cooperation um, appears in the regulation, defining the lines of action of the most recent uh, instrument for neighborhood development international cooperation, which is called NDICI and Global Europe. Um, and, uh, and, but nevertheless, um, the local and regional governments have a difficult position to hold in that context as they are both an assistance provider, an ODA, an official development aid provider, and a beneficiary. So they want uh, to participate uh, uh, and they were to participate in the policy dialogue and also re re receive funds from development partners uh, to implement activities, which is um, the, the, the frame that, uh, that uh, the framework in which uh, our discussions take place uh, right now uh, at the European level. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amandine, also for the perfect timing and for the comprehensive introduction, uh, of course, to what is understood by decentralized cooperation and how we attack it from the European perspective also a little bit. Um, I think, Amandine, I will give you the floor back in just one minute, uh, just only to announce uh, that we are going to proceed uh, with this bicycle and make an exercise where you all could be involved. And it will not be a bicycle that you buy in a supermarket. It will be a bicycle that you bring together piece by piece because some of you need to go into terrain. Some of, the, of you need to be have a fast bicycle for racing. Some of you need to negotiate cars in the city. So the bicycle must be adapted to everybody. And we proceed to the exercise of actually building our own idea, our own bicycle of decentralized cooperation. Amandine, please. 
You said it all. Thank you, Boris. Uh, I think my, I, I just would like to uh, um, to introduce this uh, this exercise that will now take place uh, from now until for 50 minutes approximately. Uh, so the important point here is to think about how uh, we are currently seeing the model of decentralized cooperation in Europe. Um, for that, we will be divided. The, the principle of the exercise and the rules of the exercise will be explained in groups because you will be divided in groups by language. Uh, there will be also a non-European participants group, as far as I understand, uh, and each group will have um, to uh, contribute through a mur mural. Um, uh, I need to mention as well that we need uh, someone to report on each group when we will be back in plenary. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Okay, did I forget something? <laughs> no, I didn't. So, <laughs> um, enjoy the exercise. It's really fun to, you will have to build your bicycle uh, and uh, good luck to the facilitators of the exercise. <laughs> I don't know who is dividing. Is it done? I am, I'm everyone else. Okay, cool. <laughs> Very good. Thank you and see you in a bit. So, Evan Lure, we are in your hands. I will uh, start sharing the screen. Hello, who is hello, Fernando. I think that Eva will arrive. <laughs> I think that Eva is uh, currently in room one. So, can you see her, Fernando? No. We'll okay. just check here. Yes, uh, she's here now. Yes? You are here. I can see her on the orange. Yes. Okay, yes, Eva. you are here. That's good. Perfect. Um, so should we do it in English or uh, in Spanish, Fernando? As I understood, there was a, a room divided by languages. There is there's Hervé and Joaquim in English. Okay, in English. So, uh, as we have more or less uh, 25 minutes, as we have to report back after in plenary, we are going, Eva and myself, to facilitate this super funny exercise that uh, most of you already know. So, I will start and then Eva will take over for the other half of the, of the exercise. Uh, goodbye, Malin. Thank you for joining. I hope that you can hear me well. Goodbye. Okay, so uh, we're going to start by the instructions, as Amoni was saying. So uh, this exercise is very simple. Uh, maybe some of you have already tried it. First, um, you, uh, we are going to read the description of the, the part of the bicycles that are uh, in the mural that uh, Fernando is sharing, so thank you very much. And the idea is to uh, select the, the pieces of the bicycle that better suit the project, organization, or the territorial context. So it's going to be you, the ones who are going to uh, say which are the best, um, taking into account your experience. And then Fernando will move the pieces in the bicycle in the mural. So um, this is going to be basically how the exercise is going to be developed in the upcoming uh, 20 minutes. And uh, important also to remind that at the end, there will be somebody of the group reporting back in plenary. So uh, you, we don't need pictures right now, but uh, have in mind that at the end, I will uh, say who is willing to report back very, very briefly to the plenary. 
So don't hesitate uh, to uh, raise your hand. Well, um, you can start with the bicycle, I guess. Or if you have questions, don't hesitate. So first, we have to uh, select the saddle. And it's very funny because with the exercise, we also learn a lot about vocabulary. <laughs> so bicycle, we have two op options, either the racing saddle or the Chrysler saddle. With the first one, so with the racing, uh, we have tried to build partnerships, but this has proven to be difficult because uh, the situation requires you to take the leading role. The second one, uh, there is a, a long story of collaboration. You can work together with trust and in conform. Your partnership will uh, cushion the bumps in the road. So the second one seems to be more comfortable. What will be the saddle that you will choose in this case? I think that you can, you don't need to raise your hand. You can maybe speak freely. You can speak small group. We are very few, <laughs> so. Can we have a, a racing saddle with a pillow? Because <laughs> from our side, <laughs> we don't have experiences uh, as uh, association of local authorities, but obviously we cannot at the same time to take the leadership of this process. So maybe a middle way. Is there an option on this or not, Fernando? It, it, it seems not for the moment, but maybe this is something we could consider for the future because this is not A, it's not C, it's something in between. Yeah. But, but I think that for the time being, we need to choose among one of these, but we, we can just put down this remark, okay? Yes, we can put the the, the note with the, with a pillow. The pillow, it, with an Italian style pillow. Yeah. But we would go, Carla, we would go more for the cruise saddle for the time being, if we need to choose one. Let's listen to the majority. I think okay. the colleagues from, from here okay. are more experienced than me. Maybe they want to choose where to sit. Maybe Mercedes. Okay, Mercedes. That is a big flag and maybe a big I chair. Can, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can see Mercedes hand. Mercedes, please. Hi, colleagues. Um, I like your point of view, Carla. Always is easier to to go soft <laughs> in the running. Uh, but I think that uh, the Europe, if we are talking about European um, um, decentralized cooperation, uh, I think uh, we are more on the second one, on the on the cruiser. Even if we had some difficulties and we still have difficulties, I think that if we have to choose, at least myself, I think that we are in the, right now, we are in the second one. Because we have learned <laughs> from the last uh, 40 years. So I, I, I do believe that we are in the second one, if we are talking about the European decentralized cooperation. And this is a very good remark because the exercise focus on the European model. So what do the others think about that? I'm also checking if there are any raised hands. <laughs> Because if there are not raised hands, we can say for the moment, we have a tendency to go more for the cruise saddle with a pillow to be bought somewhere. <laughs> we, we can see what it looks like at the end and we can maybe redefine uh, and maybe add other complements if needed. Okay, so for the moment, we can say we have a nice uh, saddle, comfortable. Okay. Perfect. Uh, then we can uh, go to the next piece of the bicycle, if you agree. And we have to choose the pedals. Uh, the pedals represent the capacity to mobilize finances. So this is a very important question, especially now talking about also partnerships uh, for mobilizing resources as well. So um, uh, sorry, I cannot see the instructions anymore. Uh, here, I see it. Okay, so the first one are the PPS pedals. There is an ex existing potential for financial mobilization, but it is not necessary to make much efforts to go fast. While the flat pedals, uh, mobilizing finances is a big challenge. Moving the bicycle forward will require a lot of strength. What are your thoughts on this? 
We can also add pillows to the, to the pedals, Carla. We can, it's going to be a very fancy bicycle. I would like to ask uh, if you think that the new Ndiki uh, tool uh, is more linked to the first kind of pedals of the others. I have uh, no answer for this. I mean, from the European point of view. Maybe the second one for now. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe Mercedes, maybe you've got a raised raise hand. hand. We can come back to you, Carla. Um, yes, thank you, Eva. Um, well, Carla, I think that we are in the opposite way today. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> well, not really, but uh, uh, from my point of view, I think that the, the first sentence of the clipless uh, pedals, I think it's, 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 it is true of European, no? uh, some part of European, because I think that there is a potential for financial mobilization. What I don't think it's true is that it's not necessary to make much uh, uh, effort to, get, to go fast, no? So I think that in this case, I think that we are also, again, in the middle, even, even if we have to choose one of them. Because, um, so, uh, if we have to choose one, I would go for the second one, for the flat pedals, because always we, we need, uh, we need uh, to mobilize more, um, more, um, um, financial, no, financial resources. But I think that at the moment there is an existing potential uh, mobilization due to the NDK, as you said, Carla, but also due to the global agendas and etc. No? So, well, maybe the second one, but with that comment on the first one. Sorry. These are very good comments for the plenary, and I, I like the reference to Ndiki. I think this is something that I would like to hear also. Um, okay, so are there other comments on the pedals? And the other colleagues, they can also put it in the chat if you wish to. Yes, don't feel obliged to take the floor if you don't want to. And also raise questions, because maybe this bicycle can also be redesigned in the near future if we got questions about the efficiency. <laughs> so Vanessa from Fons Mallorquí also agrees with uh, Mercedes. Gracias, Vanessa. We all agree on this. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Okay. So, okay. So we go for the flat pedals um, and then we move to the ears. The, this represents the knowledge and technical know-how. So again, we have two kinds, multi-range and single speed. So the multi-range is more complex, but you are able to effortless adjust to different circumstances. Having access to the necessary knowledge and technical know-how reduce the risk of accidents. The single speed, they are simple and easy to repair. They are very reliable. They do not offer you many possibilities to adjust to changing conditions. So they may may not be useful for uh, changing paths. But using single speed gears implies working without any knowledge or technical know-how. The smallest of error could cause an accident. It sounds risky. Which gear will you prefer for your bike? Carla, this is a good example of consultation. Okay, Carla, go ahead. It was not a private chat. You saw it. No, yeah, it was a private. We are a group. No, it was just for uh, breaking the ice. I feel in this way that uh, we have the knowledge as Europeans uh, to organize a complex, uh, a decentralized cooperation. What what is the difference is that sometimes we start with different uh, uh, possibility. Spain is a uh, an excellence, you know, in decentralized cooperation, because the, the local authorities are um, eligible and they can directly manage this kind of cooperation. On other countries like mine, we are not so allowed it. But for the knowledge, I feel that uh, we are in a good position. What do you think, guys? Mercedes, are you going to agree? <laughs> With Carla? Of course, my dear. Of course, of course. So, good, good. Yes, I think that we are in a good position of, uh, of knowledge. Always we need to know more no? and improve 
but from the starting point, I think that we are in a, in a better place than other, other, other stakeholders. No? So I think I, I, I do agree. But it's also true, method, if I may add, that um, having the knowledge is very good, but we cannot just stop that we need to really keep building on that because otherwise, you know, the starting point will always be the same. So we are in a very good position and we need to take advantage of that good position to really, you know, enhance it and, and enlarge the, the possibilities in the, in the future. Totally agree, Eva. I think that uh, even if we are from a, a better result, which is, it, it is a better, but it's not the best, no? I mean, we are in a better position, but as you said, I, I think that uh, the centralized cooperation uh, right now, at the, I, I think that European level, um, it's more important than ever that uh, we keep in mind that we don't know all we need to know, you know? I don't know if I, 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 I was able to express what I was thinking, so I, I agree with you. I mean, to, to choose between black and white always is difficult, and we are doing that in this exercise, no? Mm -hmm. We are trying to, um, always, there, there are always some um, green, no? <laughs> And sometimes we are closer to the uh, option B, or other times we are no, closer to the B option. But uh, well, I, from my point of view, we are closer to the first one, as uh, Carla, but with your comments, Eva. I do, I do agree with you. And it's true that in Europe we are already quite ambitious. But because we are already quite ambitious and because we've got a very good knowledge, you know, that put us in a difficult position because, you know, there's more exigence that is expected from outside. So we're good students, but, you know, that's why the level of exigence is, is higher, I think. And what about the other colleagues uh, in online or in the chat? Can we agree on the choose of gears or the multi-range gearing overall? Yeah, we agree, we agree too, because I think that also we are in a, the, I think that uh, development cooperation is changing a lot and we have different um, challenges now and different problems. It's not like 20, 25 years ago, so we need more complex, uh, I don't know how to say in English because I cannot say it well, frenos. <laughs> Breaks. Break, yeah, <laughs> yes. So for us, it's about about all that. It's just like a, a response according to the complexity of the times. And also there is a need to adjust to the current challenges even faster than before, because now there are so many challenges that are all mixed and some of them were not foreseen maybe three years ago and now we need to cope with those. And, and, and we were also facing different crises that also put us in a very difficult position. And we need to deploy funds and resources across all these challenges. And you cannot just leave one challenge aside to tackle the other one. So this is, I think that the, the period we're living nowadays is even more crucial than, than ever before. So, mm -hmm. Carla? Yeah, I agree with you, Eva, and I also want to, to say that uh, also facing the SDGs, uh, you need to have this uh, holistic vision, so you need to, to, to take this interaction with uh, different uh, uh, thematic areas, different goals and targets, so the complexity can be an opportunity also to, to face challenges in a wall, as the agenda asks. I agree with you, Carla. And complexity is also a basis for learning. We are talking about decentralized cooperation that is evolving and learning year after year, day after day. <laughs> so it seems I have, a, in any case, an option no, for the gears, the first one. Yeah. And also coming back, if I may add, uh, Lur, uh, coming back to your point, Carla, on complexity, sometimes when we face complex challenges and complex issues, there are also help us to, to develop our brains much more uh, because we are facing difficult situations and we need to provide a solution to the to the citizens really they they don't care what the challenges are they just really want to see solutions and because the local and, and regional uh, level have this responsibility towards the citizens that's why they are even more more exigent towards them so they don't really care how you solve the problem they just want the solution so that is even generating more and more innovation among the, the local level as well. They need to be faster in providing solutions. 
and they cannot just be the traditional solutions as in the past because they don't work anymore because there's so many challenges that are in the same plate at the same time. So you, the, the solutions that we provided in the past are just not suitable anymore. I mean, they are partially, but not, not fully as, as they were before. Perfect. Um, so we can pass maybe to the next piece of the bicycle, because we have something like 10 minutes left and then report back to plenary, if I'm not wrong, Fernando. Um, so the next is selecting the tires. Tires, the tires. The tires. <laughs> <laughs> they represent whether the centralized cooperation is uh, based on policies or projects. So I remember this is always a very interesting question when we are at this part of the exercise. The first one, the road bicycle tires and the mountain bicycle tires. So the first one, uh, decentralized cooperation is planned and based on policies. Road tires help to plan the best route and to go fast. Second one, decentralized cooperation is based on projects. So the road might be unpredictable. You need to be ready for all the different types of surfaces that you could encounter. So the main difference is between being based on policies or being based on projects. Are we going to select something in the middle again? For this, you can, Sorry. if you if you have like an intermediary, you can choose the front wheel, the front uh, tire of one and the back tire of other. That's an option. Mm -hmm. With the bike, go <laughs> and move. <laughs> if we if we alternate the tires, I, yeah, <laughs> I, I I don't know. I mean, that's, I a don't good, <laughs> that's a good comment. Okay. That is a really challenge, eh? Yeah, right. <laughs> Go with but, but, in, yeah, but in reality, sometimes it's like this, right? Like you, oh. you, you go with both of uh, the conditions and you go somewhere, not the ideal way, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Eh? That's true. I think that sometimes, but I think that sometimes we change styles, you know? Sometimes we are... Uh, yeah. <laughs> On the policy one, you know, and the, the first one, and then we uh, uh, come down and and change the tire for the for for the mountain bike, no. <laughs> the, the only thing is that we need to choose two of the same kind this time. <laughs> well, from my point of view, I mean, if no, no the co colleagues wants to take the the floor, but uh, I think that even we have improved a lot. Uh, probably the associations have improved more and big cities and big uh, um, uh, territories no? working on the decentralized cooperation have improved in the based on policies. I think that uh, we are still more on projects and that's one of our um, um, puntos flacos, no? Uh, Fernando? Like weak, weak. Yes, weaknesses, weaknesses, weaknesses. Thank you, Eva. Yeah, that's what I think. I mean, even I think I, I would like to say the other, <laughs> uh, but uh, honestly, and after taking the, the I mean, um, picking up the information from our local governments and what they do, and uh, mainly is based on projects. Okay, okay they are okay. aligning, but uh, are projects. So the mountain bike type. Mm -hmm. Good, uh, Carla. Mountain bike only because uh, our members can do just projects from our side. But from for what reason? From a legal reason? Legal yes. framework reason? Yes. Okay. Thank you. And the other colleagues, do you favor also mountain bikes? Vanessa, okay, mountain bikes. Good. Yes, because also I think that mountain mountain bikes goes better with the other kind of uh, frenos. <laughs> I mean, brakes. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. He hello, so hello, everybody. Uh, 
Rodrigo Castillo from the urban community of La Rochelle in France. And uh, this is a perfect example for pointing out something that uh, seems important to me. Uh, maybe there's a need for two different bicycles because there are two different uh, project, two, two different uh, uh, stages in the in the in the construction of, of a decentralized cooperation project. It means that you have one stage of constructing the the, the project itself itself. And uh, for example, the road, basi road bicycle tires, it's uh, probably more adapted to this uh, stage of constructing and uh, looking uh, uh, where you are going and using this type of bicycle. And then uh, when you are implementing the, the, implementing the project itself, you uh, are, uh, from, from my point of view, uh, uh, from my experience, you are always confronted to use uh the the mountain uh, bicycle tires so maybe the road the road bicycle tires i mean no the mountain so, bike the so mountain for, bicycle tires when when implementing the project oh. when you are thinking when you're conceiving the project you you are always uh you always start from a uh, from from policies, public policies in the case of, uh, of the urban community of La Rochelle, uh, the, the French policies uh, framework. And then when you are actually implementing the project, you realize that everything is uh, constantly changing and you need a, a, a tool that can be adapted and, and it's solid enough to, uh, to go to any surface. Okay, so it really depends on the moment where we, where we're at. At the beginning yeah. is, is more like the road one and the other one is the more the, the mountain bike. Okay, thanks Rodrigo. Okay, any other comments from the uh, colleagues? Chat, no? So we move uh, Lou to the, <laughs> yes. to the handle. So Oops. we can move to the handler powers. They represent the political will. Basically, as we have five minutes, uh, you can see the instructions, but the main difference is that first one, there is a clear political will to pursue the 2030 agenda, while for the second one, there is no clear political will to pursue the 2030 agenda. So for the first one, everything is clear, goals have been set, you can work forward effectively, uh, but for the second wall, you will need to be strong and negotiate the bumps in the world that may appear. So based on your decentralized cooperation experience, do you have clear goals to work on the 2030 agenda? Or are you facing challenges and need to negotiate it? This is especially relevant for the one who said maybe that the decentralized cooperations could be based more on policies. So. We, we need a handlebar, one way or another, otherwise we'll fall. So, Mercedes? Yes, this is, as, as I said, it's not easy. It's not easy and it's, that's why yeah, I think this is a great exercise, no? You have to think uh, on which uh, side of the balance we are, more or less, because uh, it's not a, a, an easy answer. Well, um, I think that uh, right now we could say that we are more of the drop handle handles but than the cruiser, no? I think that we are more on the align with the agenda 2030. I mean, we have to work, I mean, to do much more, but I think that uh, we are closer right now to the first one than with the other one. Maybe it's, I mean, probably, and I don't want to take much, 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 much time, but maybe it's because in the last year, many uh, European agreements uh, many a national level, it has been working hard on the implementation of the uh, Agenda 2030, and that uh, allows us to, to at least to have the the, the 17th uh, global uh, challenge, I mean, um, objectives uh, in mind when uh, local government, decentralized cooperation is defining the, the projects and the convocatorias, no? the, the calls. The calls. Thank you, Mercedes. And the other colleagues? Carla? 
I, I agree with Mercedes as always. Uh, no, it's true. Uh, the drop uh, is uh, the one I will choose because from our point, the 2030 agenda helps a lot as a, a roadmap uh, to convey uh, policies, funding, so to have clear targets. So I think uh, that uh, was a very useful tool also in the negotiations. Thank you, Carla. So it seems that we have a, a drop handle. So if no more additional comments here, we can move to the breaks, to the bell, sorry. For the bells, we have the classic or the boombox. So the classic bell, uh, does represent the communication strategy. So for the classic, you prefer to look for your own path, path without making too much noise. And for the boombox, you feel the communication must be constant and strong. And you think that everybody in the community need, community needs to know where you are going and why. So first one, you are more on your own, while second one, you communicate with the rest. And the second one also seems like a radio. <laughs> yes. So maybe it's, it's, it's more pleasant. Much better, much modern. Yes, okay, yeah. We, we need more music. We, we need music in our rights. Okay. I think there seems to be unanimity in here. So everyone agrees with the uh, with the radio? <laughs> well. Okay. Like this, we can make the bike stop if needed with the choosing the brakes. And with this, we end before going to the plenary. It represents local policies and mechanisms. And the brakes, yeah. So brakes. the brakes. We have the disc brakes and the caliper caliper breaks. Uh, the disc breaks are equivalent to good policies and working mechanism. They are high quality and precise. With them, you will always be able to react in time. With the second break, they yeah, are less developed and simple than other options. They can work well if you have enough time to react. Feedback. <sighs> So, so Carla, Mercedes, you go for one, you favor, because this one is tricky. I mean, I uh, really have a direct answer. Can you move uh, the screen and just we can see better the definition? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Basically, with the first kind, you can react on time. And with the second, uh, they only will work well if you have enough time to react. Well, but I they're may, simple, though. They're simple. I think this, uh, nothing is simple, eh, Eva? <laughs> <laughs> the caliper breaks are not simple. Uh, they're simple ones. I could say the caliper breaks because, um, I mean, even we are now very high, <laughs> I mean, feeling that we are great, it is not true. I mean, there are many, 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 many things to, 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 to achieve to, uh, now. And um, maybe because we have a lot of bureaucracy that doesn't allow us um, to break on time, some time, and to react in time because of some uh, in, uh, problems that we face, no, in our in, in the road. So even if we have a disc break, sometimes uh, they are not useful because we have the many stones on the on the way. So I would say caliper, unfortunately. But I think that right now. I would go for that. I don't know my colleagues what they think. Carla, are you going to agree with uh, caliper breaks? Yeah, also my dream is uh, the disc breaks, but I think we need to be realistic and to stay on the caliper <laughs> breaks. <laughs> Thank you, Carla. And the other colleagues? Uh, yeah, if we can choose, Carla, you're asking if we can choose the color of the bike, of course. To give Italian <laughs> Italian touch style, of course. Um, before, before we, we choose the color, do uh, the other colleagues also agree on the type of uh, breaks? It's, it's a tricky one because uh, sometimes if you have more time, you would just go for a quicker uh, these breaks. I think, but sometimes, as Mercedes and Carla said, well, we need more time to react as well. Yeah, Vanessa, you're not sure, still thinking, but think think quickly because we need to come back to the plenary very soon. Uh, 
Yeah, but uh, I agree with the idea that uh, we have to stick to the reality that uh, actually today we have caliper breaks, but the probably the go the goal to achieve is to uh, one day uh, have a, a bike with disc brakes. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. that's actually the most accurate. Yeah, analysis. I would, yeah, I would also agree with with you, Rodrigo. Yeah, mm. because one thing is the reality, and another thing is is the the illusion and the goal. But if we need to decide on what to use now, then uh, we just need to be realistic. Otherwise, we'll just fail and fall. And, and then, you know, that would also delay more the process and, and start again. So uh, if we choose maybe being slower sometimes, that can also save us time and money in a second phase. And Vanessa, have you made up your mind uh, on the brakes? Yes, I, I was thinking that caliper, but I'm not sure if it's always like like that. If uh, sometimes we we are using the other one, so I'm I'm not still clear about about this. Sorry. Okay. No. So it's not good or wrong. Yeah. yeah it's no, based no. on the reality. So each one experience is is not. Mm. And also depends on, on your experience as well. Mm -hmm. If you've been involved in, in the Central Ask Corporation project, sometimes you have the reality more, more close to your heart mm -hmm. than if you have it in, in theory only. Okay, so I, I take it as a quite complex uh, <laughs> break case, okay? So now we would need is uh, 3.21 and we need to reconvene in, uh, now to the room. Do we have a volunteer to report back on the type of... Oh, sorry, we haven't chose the color. Um, Fernando, can we can we just assign a color we like? We we can ask uh, Carla. Carla, what colors you like? No, it's up to the colleagues. Uh, for me, pink. Pink. Okay, so we like <laughs> pink. I like blue. Lur. It depends what is means the color. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't know how to change the color, but I can like write in blue. Okay. I don't know in okay. pink. Pink and blue, pink and blue. Pink and blue. Okay. Is it is it possible to have a rainbow bicycle? I think we could we, we should go for a rainbow one. That that would also represent the colors of the SDGs. Yeah, right. So okay. Sorry, rainbow, rainbow, rainbow one. SDGs? Mm -hmm. Orange. <laughs> Orange, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, okay. And now we would need a volunteer to report back to the plenary. Is there any volunteer? Carla, go for it. Mercedes, you always agree with Carla, no? <laughs> Carla, with a pink one, go, go for it. <laughs> okay. So, any volunteers? No, no, maybe no volunteers, then uh, we will do it. Okay, then we, we'll do it, I guess. Okay, I can do it if nobody is. Uh, Mercedes, okay. you can do it with me. We can do it. The bi bicycle. Okay, the bi bi Double. okay. Let's do it. And then we'll let you choose the colors for volunteer and Carla. The bi bicycle? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's pink and blue. We, we okay, should... pink and blue. Pink okay. and blue. And orange. Hervé said also orange. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you very much. And now we're back in the plenary, I think. Yes, in 23 seconds. Okay, oh, wow, okay. I'm on the knees back in the room, okay. Are you back in my room? Welcome back. <laughs> okay. I think we're still waiting for a few parts. Participants. <laughs> no, I said that they're just Thank riding a bike somewhere. And welcome back from your bike race. I see we have all participants back in the plenary room. So I would invite the three reporters uh, to give us a quick feedback uh, from their session and from their discussions. So group one was team Eva and Lur. And who is your rapporteur? We have a dynamic duo to report. Please go yeah, ahead, dynamic yeah. duo. <laughs> I start, Mercedes, what do you think? Okay, go for it. Okay, uh, we have a, a kind of a weirdo bicycle. 
<laughs> it's a mix of many, many things. Okay, we started with uh, the saddle. The saddle is comfortable because we feel that uh, European has a lot of experience uh, with partnership, so we can go comfortable. But sometimes we need an extra pillow because experience are not uh, in every country. So just to be sure that we can uh, uh, ride uh, our bicycle. Um, regarding the pedals, we think that uh, we need uh, the flat one because the challenge is uh, big enough. So we need to put a lot of uh, effort and we need a lot of strength to ride our bike. Regarding the gears, what did, what did we choose, Mercedes? The complex one, because we are facing- The multi-range, multi-range. Exactly. Because the situation is uh, very complex and uh, Mercedes will add a lot of things on this, right, Mercedes? About the complexity, variety of challenges that we have to face? Yes, regarding to the, to the gears, we are on the gears? The gears, yes. The yes. Um, I think that I didn't uh, take the floor on this one. I mean, I took the floor on a lot. <laughs> we have to be creative, but we are a duo, so. <laughs> okay, whatever. So the complexity of the environment requires uh, to be ready to face uh, a lot of uh, challenges. And, and also, Carla, if I, if I can add to this one, is that I, we, we mentioned as well that the starting point uh, at European level is, is already very ambitious, but because ah, it's yeah. already very ambitious, ah, one, yes. yeah, then the, the starting point is, is not very low, it's already very high, it's, but the, the expectations are also very high. So that's why, uh, in this case, the local and regional uh, governments have a high responsibility. So it's, it's proportionate to the level of ambition and to the level of the starting point. So Bianca we start knowledge. higher, yes. then we expect more, not us, but citizens in general, we expect mm -hmm. more as well. That was a Very description good, of the uh, complexity. Yeah, yeah. We uh, agree with you. Very uh, good. Thank you very much. Uh, any other final comments? We have three minutes left for two more minutes. You're okay. Maybe we proceed to group number two. Uh, and I just was... wanted to add something. It's thirty seconds because uh, you see, okay. the, I think probably all of us uh, um, accept it. I mean, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's along with we, what we decided in our group. I am um, just to say that the discussion, I mean, the debate, no, on the on how to build up this bicycle um, has been always. I mean, it has it hasn't been easy to decide. It's an uh, in none of the elements, because uh, sometimes I mean we don't we haven't found any element uh, to say yes it's one or another. Most of them uh, have been decided like uh, well uh, mainly is this one, but uh, we have some elements from the other uh, option. No? And I think that's important if we talk about, uh, uh, for example, the policy or the the, 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 the ties, no. That were policy, if we are working on um, uh, work on policies basis or on projects basis, no. And I think that's important to know and to debate on in which situation. Thank you very much, Mercedes. We Sorry. still have two minutes left for two groups, uh, oh, but yeah, the well, point is very much taken. Yeah, <laughs> point is very much taken. Thank you very much for the observation, and we had the same debate in our group. Uh, that these are not black and white cases. There's always a mix of a little bit of one, a little bit of other. The reality is complex. And I would give the floor to Dominic for one minute for a quick wrap up of our group discussion. Thanks, thanks Boris. I'm Dominic from the Local Government Association for England, um, but based in Brussels. Yes, we also had a kind of Frankenstein of a bike, um, a very hybrid bike and um, unlike the graphic the, the choices were not black and white um, really needed a mixture of both choices on most of the options but um, for the saddle the relationship which is the quality of relationships we thought we probably needed a racing saddle we thought um, 
sometimes you know there are opportunities to build better relationships but um, it needs a lot of effort and it is uh, quite often challenging um, for the pedals which is the finance um, question um, we thought that relatively speaking we probably did have racing pedals we thought with the eu and with lots of other bodies that we have access to um, that that um, is never enough but it's probably it, it, probably relatively not not the main uh, issue. There's lots of policies and programs out there, especially for, for EU um, member states, uh, was the feeling. On gears, we went for the multi-range gears. This is the, the technical knowledge and, 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 and know-how. Um, we felt that it was relatively um, possible to uh, find or, or, or pick up the, the relative um, knowledge and know-how through, through different networks and different bodies. Uh, on tyres, which is the the question about um, whether you have a, a standardised way of doing doing cooperation or you do it on ad hoc, we felt there was very much no common plan or no template nationally for how to do this, and that um, we needed the mountain bike tyres um, so that we kind of um, uh, we worked on a more ad hoc basis, and the terrain was different uh, in different circumstances. Um, the point was made that both type of tyres are are rubber, both made made of rubber, which drive the bike forward, and that was um, the, the that could be the SDGs themselves that um, work on both types of tire to drive the bicycle forward. Um, political will, uh, we thought there was relatively clear political will with the handlebars, so we went for the racing handlebars, a clear political will, at least in, in Europe, towards the 2030 uh, agenda. Um, I suspect that's stronger in, in EU member states than, than, than perhaps um, elsewhere in Europe. Um, on the bell, which was a communication side of things, we went for the boom box. Um, we do try and do as strong as communication as much as possible. Uh, for the brakes, which are the um, how you how quickly you can react to changes, uh, we went for the disc brakes for the front of the bike because we thought that um, um, associations can react um, relatively quickly, relatively on time. But as you go further down the, the the subnational hierarchy, if you like, as you go towards local authorities, smaller local authorities, um, they might have caliper brakes at the back because um, it takes longer for them to react. Um, so yeah, similar to the other group, a hybrid bicycle with um, no black and white choices. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dominique. Very good observation about the different capacities and different needs at different levels from association to local government. So we act on different levels, different spheres. So we have also different capacities with our actors. And the last group uh, was the group by team Jesse and Stan, and who would be your uh, your rapporteur. One minute, please, so that we have some break. Yeah, uh, that will be me, uh, Boris. Thank you. Um, it might not really be surprising, but uh, I think I heard uh, all kinds of similarities between uh, the discussions you had and and that we had um, almost sounds like we're working in a different in, in the same sector. Um, I think we also um, were sitting uh, on our bike on the cruiser saddle. Um, I think uh, till a few years back, that was really the saddle. I think for for quite a long time. Uh, though one remark in our discussion was uh, that the right. Uh, was maybe a bit bumpy, let's say, over the last years, uh, but we're still on the, the cruiser saddle. Um, yeah, just to keep it really brief, but uh, we see that mobilizing finance is remains and is really a big challenge uh, for a lot of our partners. And we had the international group, so that also provided a bit of an interesting view um, on the European perspective um, outside of Europe. Um, we chose for the multi-range gears. Um, and we also think there was quite clear political will um, as to the 2030 agenda. Um, we chose for the classic uh, bell, um, so not the horn. And yeah, you can see some of the, of the boxes also illustrating a bit the points of discussion. Um, and we decided to use both the brakes, um, uh, one for each tire. 
Um, but I think I'll just leave it to this, uh, Boris, if, if that's okay. That's perfect. Thank you very much. And also uh, uh, a special bonus for you for the annotation with the post-its so that you also explain your situation. Uh, even if you choose a little bell, I think you have boombox style. You have very, you can very much uh, inform us about what you did and why you did so. Uh, thank yeah, you very we much. Just, we chose a little bell, but a very big version of it. Uh, so not very um, professional, but we try to like be loud. Yeah. Church bell. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you very much to all for your, not only for your time, but actually for your contribution, because you've been all very lively, you've been, been a very easy to make, discuss and contribute from your experience. I think this is the richest part of the training, to see the mirror of your own reality uh, in somebody else's contributions. Uh, we have the time for a very short break, uh, so let's try and be uh, disciplined and keep it five minutes, and we start 15.40. Is it okay? Five minutes? I see nods. Uh, thank you very much. See you in three minutes and two minutes to connect. <laughs> Cooperation. And there was a shift uh, in the policy frame that moved us from the uh, official development aid to where we are now on efficient and more inclusive cooperation, also allowing the uh, local and regional governments to be more uh, included. Then the Boots and Partnership had four principles, which are the ownership of the development priorities by developing countries, the focus on results and basically eradication of poverty, uh, implementing the uh, sustainable development and also reducing the inequalities. Then a uh, third principle was the inclusive development partnerships, uh, also based on openness and trust and dialogue and learning, and also uh, defining the different roles of the actors. And the fourth principle was the transparency and mutual accountability, not only among the partners, but also towards the beneficiary. Then we move on to the Addis Ababa Action Agenda from 2015, and that set up the framework for financial sustainable development. And also there was the paragraph uh, 32, which really recognised the uh, role of the local and regional governments. Um, that really uh, provides uh, the recognition of the role that they can play, which is a fundamental piece in terms of uh providing this sustainable uh, financing then the uh paris agreement in 2015 with the famous cop 21 that provided a, a binding um framework for all parties on negotiating parties because they agreed to reduce the emissions uh by 1.5 degrees we're not in track right now so this is really becoming a crucial challenge now ahead but at least that was the agreement of all parties to to work in this uh a crucial challenge. Then the Sendai framework uh, for disaster risk reduction that set up the framework for uh, work between 2015 and 2030, and that really set up the clear targets and objectives to prevent and reduce existing uh, disaster risk. Then we move to the new urban agenda for 2016 that was adopted by UN Habitat and that set out the framework for sustainable urban development and also with a huge focus on urbanization and a key role was played by the territorial partnerships. And then we come to the 230 agenda on sustainable development with uh, set out the uh, SDGs uh, goals that we all know. And uh, we have emphasized the number 11 and number 17 are the key ones for us. If we move to the next uh, slide, please. Then we have here uh, the general principles of the SDGs, and I think that all of you know it, but just uh, as a refreshment, we have the seven uh, principles, also complemented by uh, an eighth one, the monitoring and evaluation. But these seven principles are based on experience and they were based on the Millennium Development Goals. Um, then the multidimensional uh, approach, also uh, another principle that sets the uh, trajectories and social, economic and environmental factors. Then leaving no one behind, um, and that really encourages the uh, subnational level to work beyond their own territories. So not only in the country and um, countries, and they also go uh, beyond the jurisdiction of countries. Then the global in nature, because these challenges are just not uh, in our territories. And as we discussed also in the previous session, we are facing out more and more global challenges, and we need to tackle them in a simultaneous way. So that's really a huge challenge in, in per se. Then. Uh, another principle is universal nature. Uh, that's also applicable to all countries in the world, regardless of the level of. Do we have three minutes? No? No, no? Okay. Then um, 
<laughs> the integrated nature and we are linking all goals and countries and levels and then it also has to be inclusive because we need to involve all citizens and all this will be measurable with indicators move to the next one uh, but i had fifth have 15. okay i'm packing the agenda <laughs> to 30 and sdgs we have said that the localization of the sdgs will also uh uh, lead us to the good implementation of the uh, sustainable development agenda and for this SDG 17 on partnership is the crucial one because this is the, really the place where the centralized cooperation can be seen as a mechanism for sustainable development. Then we also said that the uh, effective implementation of the SDGs uh, will be uh, depending on our ability really, yes, we had it just one, one technical issue because I was supposed to have 15 minutes. Okay, not because, okay, 10 more. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, sorry. Then, uh, on the local, then the effective implementation of the SDGs will also depend on our ability to realize this in the regions and cities. And the SDGs also have targets that re relate directly to the subnational government. So it's only the cities and regions that are really well suited to translate this agenda in their territories. Then SDGs, as I said, is uh, is really the one that is, uh, I would say, the umbrella SDGs where we can really take action. And we are also moving from the one-to-one -one partnership to no more global partnerships. So this is really uh, giving a lot of added value to the situation. Then if we move to the next one. Then uh, what I would like to make now is the connection between uh, the SDGs and the decentralized cooperation through two ways. One is the narrative of the principles, and then the next slides will be the narratives of the synergies. As we have already seen with the uh, Busan partnerships, uh, we have um, these principles that I already mentioned earlier. I've already mentioned the eight principles of the SDGs and uh, Mondine also referred to the principles of the centralized cooperation and we see them that they're right in the middle. So we can see as the principles of the centralized cooperation that they are basically based on reciprocity, proximity, participation, multi-state holder uh, level and geographical governance, geographical alliances and solidarity. And we can see that all of these are all mixed. So we can see that all these principles are complementary and uh, we cannot just deal with ones without forgetting the other ones because then we won't be able to implement the SDGs at all. So this will also be accomplishing, but will also depend on the localization process and the renewal of the centralized cooperation. And then the next one, uh, please. And then in terms of the synergies of the um, SDGs and the um, decentralized cooperation, we can see that the SDGs can be seen as the umbrella, where the centralized cooperation can be seen as the tool or driver where uh, SDGs can be uh, implemented on the, on the ground. So if we go on to the, how the SDGs can really contribute, <laughs> um, how the SDGs can contribute <laughs> to the overall framework, <laughs> Then we can see that the uh, the SDGs can bring a universal framework to the whole context, and it goes beyond the political the political situation, the geography, the continent in which we're based. We can also see that that brings resources together, and then by bringing resources, uh, we can see that the uh, actions can be implemented in a better way. The SDGs can also set up a roadmap um, and then uh, by having this common roadmap then we see that we can uh, involve uh, more actors together, more alliances, more objectives and more mechanisms to facilitate the path towards uh, sustainable development. This SDGs framework can also allow for uh, an exchange of knowledge, which is fundamental to have this know-how in place and to see how the uh, local and regional governments can uh, export as well and broaden their uh, knowledge. The uh, SDGs also emphasize the uh, need for more resources and having more resources recognize uh, broadly can also allow you to really uh, apply for more and then there's also a global recognition at international level that the need for resources is there so there's a justification behind that then in terms of uh, data we have seen that uh, the 2030 agenda also calls for strengthening the data collection and having more data and more solid data can also allow you to have better projects because they're more solid and they're sounded basically and then in terms of the uh, monitoring and evaluation and reporting, the SDGs provides this framework where the indicators can play an interesting and important uh, 
role to assess the evolution and also the uh, progress and to really assess where we are. And in terms of the decentralized cooperation seen as a driver for SDGs localization, we can see that, uh, as Mandina also mentioned, that 70% uh, of the uh, SDGs uh, targets have a local touch. So it's just uh, obvious that the local and regional authorities have to be in involved in the in the designing of, uh, of the SDGs and have to play a key role in the implementation of it. So they cannot just be left aside and involve them at the very end of the process. They have to be there from the from the very beginning. We also see that the um, um, the centralized cooperation is a, an excellent multipurpose and multi connector and can be a powerful catalyst for bringing all stakeholders together and on these holders they the stakeholders they also need to trust each other they need to emphasize the dialogue they need to enhance dialogue transparency uh, horizontal way and be solid there then also the decentralized cooperation allows for territorial stakeholders partnership set up. This is more and more important nowadays because we've seen the need that all partners, they need to interact and work together. Then also the decentralized cooperation uh, is helping to raise the local awareness and information of the citizens uh, on SDGs and also on state development in general. And we have seen that the decentralized cooperation can be a tool, a tool for social transformation through uh, global citizenship by promoting learning exchange, dialogues along, uh, alongside the localization of SDGs. Then uh, is the centralized cooperation also promotes the multi-level governance, uh, which is useful for the localization process. Um, that reinforces the local governments uh, and local governance as well. And we have seen also the SDG 16 is also uh, very key in the successful implementation of the whole agenda. Then the centralized cooperation also facilitates the policy transfer, dialogue, and common reflection of development models and public uh, policy. And this uh, approach can also benefit the localization of uh, SDGs and the centralized cooperation, and that can also be used as a platform. And the last point is that it encourages the innovation because we've seen that uh, these partnerships also allow for uh, development of more uh, knowledge and sharing knowledge and uh, sharing best practices, which really is a rich uh, source of information. Then if we move to the next one, please. And then uh, we've already seen the bicycle, so we all know how it works. But the thing is that there is not only one solution for our issues and our problems. We have seen that the five Ps of the uh, 2030 Agenda and Sustainable Development Agenda are peace, prosperity, people, partnership and planet. And we have seen that with centralized cooperation, we're adding the policy and the project. And we can say that the policy is seen as the vision and the project can be seen as the driver. And together, this is the way in which we can achieve uh, sustainable development. But now we've seen that the, the five Ps cannot just work on their own. We just need to add these two Ps. So at the end, we have these seven Ps that will just make the whole agenda successful agenda. And we cannot say that one of the Ps is more important than the others, because then it would be an unbalanced bicycle. And we have also seen through the exercise of the uh, bicycle that there is no one ideal bicycle, but we need to consider the seven Ps. It will depend also on where we are at the moment and with what partners we're working with and with what resources we can count on. But we have to see that all these seven, they have to be combined. And it will be like a roller coaster. Sometimes we will need to emphasize one P more than the others, but they all seven have to be involved all the time if we want to really advance and make progress. So this is just um, a little summary. And I know that uh, most of you already know all of this, but this is good to refresh our memories and uh, that also give us food for thoughts. And then I would also like now to pass the floor on to my colleague uh, Joaquim, who wrote, who you all know very good and very well, and he's from the Network of Association of Local Authorities in Southeast uh, Europe, and he's going to present us his uh, experience on a joint project with GIZ on social rights for vulnerable groups. So Joaquim, you've got the floor, please. Eva, very nice presentation. Looking forward to having it. Um, um, I'm going to, I have to rush because I have exactly five minutes in order to uh, share with you experience. I don't know how to do it. Let's go to the next one on, uh, um, uh, on projects um, that uh, NALAS um, implemented um, together with um, the help of, uh, of GIZ, basically. We started off, and this is just the background, we started off in 2017 at that time 
um, by drafting a booklet, a handbook um, on um, how to implement the SDGs for municipalities, for local governments. And this, uh, this guideline uh, started to be the first, let's say, material uh, to, um, uh, to train trainers and uh, to get uh, not only the message across, but uh, for awareness raising uh, within the uh, within our network. So what I'm referring to today, you, you can see it. Basically, we have an umbrella, a big umbrella of a project, which you can see as number one being displayed, enhancing the local capacities. And then we have smaller, uh, two smaller ones that are linked uh, um, uh, to... Uh, um, focus on two countries, the second one on North Macedonia and uh, Kosovo, it's uh, for regional learning, and then the third one, promoting and scaling up of models, but uh, to a special, um, to a special social, um, um, social approach, uh, which is a minority, the minority commissioner. Um, let's go to the next one. I just want to tell you that besides that we are right now, uh, I've got uh, the, the big one runs until September, it's not July because we got a no cost uh, extension until September and we are already preparing now, sorry, three. Now the overall shared objective you can see right there, we are, uh, we are executing, implementing in five countries of the Western Balkans, except Montenegro. Um, we are, as Eva showed, uh, we are concentrating uh, the implementation of the 2030 agenda according to the third uh, principle, which is low, uh, leave no one behind, the sort of solidarity principle and the equality principle uh, in that. The partners are not only local government uh, associations, which are our partners, but at the same time also beneficiary. We have partners also from the uh, from the CSO and from the SDG coordination bodies. This goes, I mean, what I'm telling you right now uh, goes not only for the umbrella project, but also for the smaller ones. Um, the same is the uh, for the target groups and the approach itself. Could we go to the next one, please? And uh, here you see the different uh, social approaches that have been scaled up. Now, as far as the social approaches are concerned, um, let me tell you that all of them are uh, due to successful implementation of these social approaches, the, uh, the ones that you list, see listed right here in a certain territory. So um, this goes uh, for, the, for the five countries. And the, for the last one, the minority commissioner, this is a social approach that has been um, translate, uh, trans, uh, transposed from um, Schleswig-Holstein, which is uh, the northernmost uh, federal state of Germany next to the border of Denmark, uh, where you have a part particular characteristics that you have um, different minority groups um, living together. Um, you have the Schleswig minority and then you have a Danish minority and they have also uh, within uh, the parliament, uh, the federal parliament uh, seats uh, a guarantee. So this is a special um, uh, minority commissioner social approach that has been uh, trans, uh, transposed to uh, Jelena and uh, from Bielina to other, to other municipalities. And the, the methodologies that were applied in all three of them, uh, the social mapping one as the methodology uh, in order to obtain uh, evidence-based data for planning and this evidence-based uh, data for, uh, for planning um, obtained via um, on the ground, uh, a survey by identifying the, uh, the most vulnerable groups within a, uh, within a territory helped later on also to redevise, to redesign uh, and to reshape a social uh, policy at the local level within municipalities. And the social mentoring, which, is, uh, which has been uh, used especially for the uh, vulnerable groups in, uh, as a uh, new innovative uh, employment um, uh, tool that we used. Uh, can we go to the next one? I would like to insist, I think this is number five, I would like to insist a little bit more, uh, although I think I have about two minutes. Okay, now what is common also and uh, to all the uh, projects, the big one and the two small ones, which I showed you is 
the transfer, the systematic transfer of know-how, um, which you can see displayed over here. It started, um, and we are talking about um, the initiation 2019, we were already starting to feel uh, the, uh, um, uh, the pandemic. So initially we designed the whole capacity development process as face-to-face -face, and uh, rapidly we had to, trans uh, to translate it to, uh, to online. So we started off with an orientation meeting uh, where we had the different uh, interested parties all on board uh, to tell them what we are about to do in the in the region. And uh, they were invited then, the ones who um, um, kept on board, to uh, an introductionary webinar. The introductionary webinar and what follows later on um, has been um, uh, followed up by meta experts in the different in the different approaches. So uh, the um, <clears throat> the participants weren't on their own. It's not like you know one of these uh, let's say online courses. You get a password, you click in there, and you're on your own, and you might be lost. So from the very start, it, this was this was been accompanied. Now for the e-courses, um, uh, bear in mind the e-courses. Um, they are four week courses, uh, four models. Per one uh, per one week, um, accompanied by a course facilitator and meta experts, we had a um, as far as the evaluation is concerned of the of the participants, we had ex ante and ex post uh, evaluation to uh, to see to what extent the knowledge that has been transferred was being useful on the job. Uh, later on. This was also then the, uh, uh, the successful passing of the e-courses um, was then a precondition uh, in order to participate in the, in the study visit. The study visit with, which had uh, unfortunately being, um, uh, being um, we needed to implement it as a, as a virtual study visit because it was impossible uh, due to the restrictions to travel to uh, Schleswig-Holstein. It was an additional component within the transfer of, uh, of knowledge but getting to know the experience on the ground to relate to the different entities that were involved. And also at that time already, at the end of the e-course, they were asked, uh, the participants were asked to come up with a, a draft action uh, a plan and an idea of a concept. Now, after the study visit, um, and this, uh, the, um, the initial ideas of the concept of the action plan were being uh, revised due to the new input uh, received due to the, the study visit. And then we started off with the learning, learning clusters, which is really the interesting thing uh, to relate to because the, um, um, we define the learning clusters as a, a, as a self-steered and collabor collaborative uh, capacity development format that, uh, that joins the practitioners um, of state and non-state uh, uh, stakeholders sharing as, um, uh, a defined work environment uh, to benefit from uh, shared and complementary know-how and uh, uh, different experiences coming together in order to develop and scale up applicable solutions and uh, uh, successful approaches. Uh, in the relevant uh, work uh, environment by guaranteeing what we try to do is by promoting the economic, social and cultural rights of women, children, youth, uh, people with uh, disabilities, minorities, LGBTI and their equal participation in, uh, in society. Now, what we got together in these learning circles were, first of all, the participants of the uh, e-learning courses and the study visit. We had at the same time, every local government associations in the five countries, they were in charge of hosting one of the social approaches um, and to look after the organization. Uh, at the same time, we had a resource person uh, from the municipalities uh, with the highest grade of, uh, um, of experience that helped uh, and uh, uh, taking, um, taking on board um, third party interested uh, uh, experts from the, CS, uh, from the CSO. Um, at the same time then, the, uh, the learning cluster helped to further develop the concept 
uh, and the action plan by the, by the experience coming from, uh, from other participants. And then the last part was dedicated towards the testing of the approaches within the municipalities, which also was accompanied by a small, uh, let's say, token of, um, 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 of motivation, um, was a small amount that was being um, uh, put to, uh, at the service of the municipalities to test the approaches. Um, basically, um, minute, this, uh, the time is up, I know. Um, I, I'm, it's, I'm sorry, I mean, this is what I'm trying to tell you. I mean, uh, for, every, for every single thing, we had, uh, uh, of course, guidelines, methodology that has been uh, uh, developed. Uh, the, next, the next slide will show you what we are preparing right now. Um, this is um, the, the, sorry, three part. Uh, where we keep on uh, based on the experience that we have with the municipalities, with the local government associations from the five countries, not only regarding the social, uh, the social mapping, because we are there uh, um, working um, towards the inst institutionalization of the social mapping within some of the member countries, uh, so that the ministries uh, who are in, uh, in charge um, do uh, accept and acknowledge the social mapping methodology that uh, that were devised um, as a valuable one. We are also working towards uh, um, institutionalizing um, the social social mentoring and um, further going ahead with the uh, social approaches uh, within municipalities that were interested to participate but couldn't uh, due to language problems. So we uh, started in the last part to also to, um, to translate into um, a different country in different languages, which allows a bigger um, uh, audience to participate in the, uh, in the knowledge uh, sharing. Um, I'm sorry, I mean, this. I had only five minutes. I already in seven minutes, Eva. I hope that you um, forgive me. Um, this is a much bigger uh, topic to share. Um, what I did, at least as a, let's say, consolation that we, you will have, because I didn't run into the impacts and the results, but you will have, I understand, at the end um, of this uh, first session of TU, uh, the TUTs, it will be shared with you the impacts, the results, and also the general outline of the, uh, of the project. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Joachim. Um, I am even sorry to, to interrupt you because it was very, very interesting. And there was an excellent example that brought together many elements which we already discussed, the global agenda, the territorial approach, the regional dimension, the local policy, the engagement of associations, the peer learning element, capacity building, ex ante and ex post evaluation, all the boxes ticked of an ex excellent example, how to bring together policy, projects, stakeholders, uh, and methodologies uh, together. Thank you very much, Joachim, for this excellent example. Yeah, and sorry, sorry to all of you. I, I was really hastening uh, running through it, but uh, only way to do it. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you very much again. And we proceed uh, to the next part of our training of trainer session, which will be the mural exercise titled "Explaining the SDGs." And I invite Jesse, uh, Jesse Post, to, to give us an introduction to the mural exercise. Thank you. And I wanted to say, Joachim, you always present with a lot of charm, so nobody, uh, nobody's angry, I think. <laughs> and I will just be super quick uh, to compensate a little bit uh, so that everybody gets to go home uh, at, or, or <laughs> to go to dinner at some point. Um, we are doing another game after the first very fun one. This exercise um, is called Explaining the SDGs um, and what we will try or what the objective of it is to help you make more sense of the relationship between decentralized cooperation and the SDGs. We have been showing uh, the theoretic part. We have uh, showed one example of a project which combines the two. And now we want to invite participants to, to share your own knowledge and experience uh, and explain how, how, how you connect the two. Um, in an imaginary project, in fact, but we will learn more about that when you go to the workshops or to the breakout sessions. 
Uh, Fernando, are you uh, going to uh, di direct us again? That's great. Yes. So we're going into smaller groups and then uh, we'll work on our own decentralized cooperation SDG project and then return for a short plenary wrap up where you can present uh, your projects. So 25 minutes or 20? Yes. Eva and Lur, hello, you are the facilitators for the sessions. Yeah, we're moving rooms, so we can leave her, um, uh, Mondine and Boris in this one. <laughs> ah. Yeah, I think, Sarah, I think that you and I are in different groups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because here I'm on. I'm. Uh, I'm uh, not uh, moderating. Maybe I. I. I should be helping, support okay. and Eva. It's okay. We are here. <laughs> Claudia, if you are with us, I'm not sure. Maybe then you are. Let me see in the in the guide. It's okay. We are. We are here. Sorry, it was just that we are in the same room. Claudia, so you are for the team too. Okay, go ahead, please. Okay, uh, so sorry, we were just moving rooms. So we have something like uh, 30 minutes for doing this exercise. Um, we need to share the screen. I think it's uh, Sarah, you're going to share the screen if I'm not wrong with the exercise, which is very interesting. I'm I'm sorry. I have no access to share the screen. I have to communicate. Go ahead and explain. No um, yes, sure. It's a. It, some of you are maybe already familiar with the exercise. So basically, what we are going to do for the next minutes is that uh, we are going to have three SDGs assigned, and it will be the moment to test if you know your SDGs by heart. Mm -hmm. But uh, don't worry because they will be noted in the screen so you will be able to see what are the SDGs and based on these three SDGs you will have to give a title and a brief description to the project on decentralized cooperation and this by using the post-its that you will see in the, in the circles of the exercise and after the title and a brief description of the project you will have to describe the different needs of the project uh, so that it can be properly formulated and implemented as if it was in real life. Mm -hmm. And then you will have to list the actors uh, because we were just talking about uh, the different multi-stakeholder. Uh, well, it going, we are going to talk about this mm -hmm. after, but we already said the importance of partnerships. And finally, um, you will have to select what are the other SDGs that are re related to your project. So while uh, Sarah's tried to fix the not screen yet. Shares, no problem, no problem. We can, we, we can, can even assign maybe, maybe. Yes, we can assign a reporter and we can even start. Huh? Yeah, we can start and then I will, I will, I hope I can share screen. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, if you want, Sarah, I can try to uh, share screen. Uh, I don't know. I don't what... know if you can, I cannot. It's just, it's we not can. that I cannot, it's forbidden. You know, the okay. function is only of the of the host. host. Okay. Okay. And I'm not sure who is the host of this meeting. 
I'm a co-host, so maybe I can. Ah, then you can. Yes. So I can. You can. Okay. You can just <laughs> authorize me. <laughs> I can. Okay. I cannot put you co-host, but I can share screen. <laughs> you can also make me co-host to okay. and get everybody to share. Uh, um, more. Or you share screen. I, I share. I share screen yes. because I cannot make it also because I don't know what is happening. Okay. So. Uh, can you see my screen? Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry because I cannot. Uh, yes, I can zoom also at the same time. Great. Okay. So I will try to make the zoom uh, available for reading. Okay. So basically, uh, these are the three SDGs that we have: SDG five, SDG eight, SDG thirteen. So don't need to know them by heart. Gender equality, decent work, and economic growth, climate action. So uh, with these three SDGs, you control the team for okay, <laughs> we are going. You are going to propose brainstorm on a possible project, and then give a title. Uh, it's time for imagination. Don't hesitate to uh, make a very funny title, also realistic. So and the description as well. It should be based on your, well, either on your experience, uh, but uh, most importantly on the three SDGs that you have here. So it needs to be a project linking gender equality, decent work and economic growth and climate action. And we also have some ideas from the secretariat, but it's, it's also up to the participants to, to come up with uh, innovative ideas. And then so, Anguita, Joaquim, Jonas. Okay. So we, we, we just need to have a title of a project, right? I mean, you, you need to see with these three SDGs how you can connect them, how you can interlink them and just frame them in a, in a global project. And give a name and then see what are the actors that are, need to uh, be involved to implement your project, uh, what recommendations, what is the core of your of your project. But you ne it needs to be a project where you include these three dimensions of, of gender, decent work and, and climate. Okay. I know it's a bit of a, <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a shock after, after lunch, lunch, but uh, okay. It's a challenge, but uh, we need to come up with, I'm, I'm sure we'll come up with something very nice. And here you see the description, the name of the project, oh, sorry. And then we will have to list here the needs, uh, the actors and the other SDGs. So it goes by a step. The idea is really to imaginate the project by a steps, starting from the three SDGs that we have here. And, and also, also why we need to connect these three SDGs. SDGs. What will come out after this project once we connect them? Well, if we have gender equality in there and we talk about um, some of the uh, some of the groups, I mean, we have to focus on, on, on which one would be then the, the most appropriate one. If we talk uh, and I'm just referring to myself to the region uh, where uh, where we are working, southeastern uh, Europe, we have a big problem with the with the youngsters because um, the youngsters are the ones who are leaving the region who are uh, going abroad, uh, uh, migrating to the EU and leaving uh, the region without development potential. Um, so if, uh, in other words, um, creating better working conditions, uh, better services, public services, uh, which all do uh, contribute to a better um, um, standard uh, of living and uh, also opening up a perspective, a long-term perspective, a vision uh, for the countries uh, to develop. Um, uh, and this linked to, um, to inclusive and sustainable uh, uh, development, uh, I think uh, this could be these could be uh, ingredients which are valuable, uh, um, and I'm talking for Southeastern Europe. How, if, if I may ask, uh, how, how would gender be the, the core element of this project? The core or is element, just the fact? The core, no, the core element uh, could be. It would be uh, the growth. It would be number eight. But yeah, could. Yeah, Sarah, no. you, uh, Sarah, you've raised your hand, maybe. 
Yeah, yeah. In this year, uh, we it is not um, we, we can uh, invent a hypothetical project. I think the idea of Joachim is uh, relevant for many cities in the south or or wherever. So uh, for youth looking work opportunities, maybe in that case for girls looking for job opportunities related to climate action. So for example, no. So what could be this as a concrete? idea is it if it's a little bit more specific than this uh, that that's enough and we can go to the next step mm -hmm. we can so also think of the name afterwards you know once we have got an element yeah mm -hmm. but i mean the point of course a little bit to to have specific is it an organizational project is it a technical skill um, delivery uh, what is the point of cooperation why should there be cooperation I think the direction Joachim was mentioning is is uh, is uh, is the right one. Mm -hmm. Maybe Rodrigo, can you say something? We are very keen to hear from you. But there is uh, Agita has raised the hand. Ah, so sorry, I I, and I, I don't see sorry. Rodrigo on the. Yeah, I am the here. Board? I am here. Okay. But, but Agita was raising her her hand, so I. Ah, okay. Okay. Sorry. Give okay. her the floor. Okay. Sorry. Then we go Agita and then uh, Rodrigo. Thank you. I just uh, I was listening to what uh, Joachim was telling, and I have a funny title: "Stay with me." <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> As you said that they are leaving, and um, just to add uh, to the description that uh, besides the three SDG, the horizontal priority could be digitalization, and it can it can be linked also with uh, with gender equality, uh, as we can put as a priority target group uh, girls and women. Mm -hmm. Okay, and in what geographical part? Uh, we are always for Eastern Partnership. Eastern Partnership, okay. And Joaquin, you also had this uh, geographical um, idea in mind, uh, Eastern Partnership or yeah, more South? Be, I mean, South? Yeah, no, no, it could be, I mean, um, you know, whether for our region, Western Balkans or including the Western Balkans, Southeastern Europe, or go, going further, uh, further East. Uh, uh, as Agita said, it's uh, it's fine, and the digitalization anyway is the cross cutting, is a big cross cutting topic uh, that can fit in uh, in almost uh, almost anywhere, and this could be used. I mean, either uh, let's say to what is what is needed uh, for uh, uh, awareness raising. It could be uh, it could be used for uh, creation uh, creation of job opportunities. Uh, uh, there are a lot of things that can be done. Okay, good. And then Rodrigo, you raise your hand. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, no, uh, Sarah invited me to, to to raise my hand. So uh, okay. I will I will just add something, some information about this uh, really interesting proposition. Uh, I think every in every within every uh, decentralized cooperation project, it needs to be adapted to the to the local uh, to the local situation. I I, I will just um, give you an example of what we do uh, in IT. For 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 instance, uh, in our cooperation uh, decentralized cooperation program. Uh, we adapt the 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 the, uh, the education programs uh, to in order to 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 adapt uh, the uh, the skills of the people that that assist to these uh, uh, education programs to the local uh, economy uh, to the local economy uh, uh, panorama. So I think in every decentralized cooperation. Uh, the 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 skills or the 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 field that we we are trying to be developing needs to be adapted to the reality of the local economy of the country. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Rodrigo. Sara, you've raised your hand. Was from the. Okay, I also. Um wanted to maybe make a suggestion because we need to link all these three SDGs and maybe the the, the core of the project could also be focused on climate. Because mm -hmm. we have the uh, number 13 that we need to link it up. So it can be stay with me, but maybe with that as a name of the project, but maybe we can define what is specific actions we can uh, develop on climate. Is it just uh, climate at the city level or is it just to work on adaptation aspects mm -hmm. or is uh, working on resilience? Is it a capacity building on resilience or is it building something physically? And why we need to uh, involve women and, and girls? So we, you we know, then to... we should deliberate, Eva, um, uh, as oh, far sorry? as the, the 
uh, if I, what we need to do also is uh, to have a clear, clear understanding uh, as far as the territory is concerned. So if we talk about women, uh, which are among the, uh, well, this is a vulnerable group anyway, uh, apart from the disabled and the, uh, and the elderly, um, uh, we also have to take into consideration the, uh, um, the percentage of, uh, uh, of poverty among the, um, among the group. And then the distribution of poverty is different. Uh, if you go, if we talk about the urban, um, uh, the urban environment or the rural environment. So uh, this might also be a consideration uh, uh, um, further on to take, um, you know, where do we concentrate, where do we concentrate on? Uh, let's say, do we go, let's say uh, a city uh, where you have, uh, uh, let's say a, broad, a broader perspective uh, um, of, uh, uh, of opportunities or do we go really uh, to the remote areas uh, where poverty uh, is really a big, uh, uh, a big issue? Mm -hmm. But my question was more, how can we link it to the climate aspect? Because we need to find a link to SDG 13. So is that we want to maybe uh, work on adaptation uh, awareness? So it will be more on the educational side. Maybe Jonas, you have. A yeah, with with my city, the city of Ostend, um, we are supporting a group group of women in, in Banjul um, uh, to organize themselves in an organization um, making cooking briquettes as an alternative for uh, you know charcoal, which is mostly sold by by women. Um, but that's uh, Western Africa, so uh, it's, that's not uh, mm -hmm. Eastern Europe. A good Europe. example. Okay, we need uh, to move a specific I, example. I, I would like to add something uh, uh, to what Jonas just said. Uh, it is important uh, maybe to analyze the gendered uh, sectors of the economy in, in the country we are working with, in the partner country. So because in many countries, the, the, uh, some sectors of the economy are strongly gendered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So maybe we need to move a bit faster, not to <laughs> run out of time. <laughs> okay. So that's good. So uh, we are now in uh, the, el, es el grupo de los, uh, no? the actors now. So we've got the, the needs. needs. So the needs, the what needs, do you need for the project? Okay. For example, okay. the case of, of uh, Ostende may be interesting. What are the needs mm -hmm. uh, to, to start the project? And then would be the actors. Mm -hmm. In terms of needs, it can be physical needs, it can be also resources, uh, it can be financial needs, uh, legal framework. So, But I think that the resources and legal framework is also something that is always common to any project. We need a clear legal framework, I think, mm -hmm. and resources, uh, financial resources and human resources. What are the needs we we need? S security. What security? Security, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think for many for many partner countries, uh, security is a main issue. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, coordination to ensure knowledge transfer. Okay. And capacity building as well. Yeah. Here. That's, uh... And knowledge sharing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other needs? Uh, okay. Maybe just look, for think about the different. start of, but you can put it in the actors no? But when you start a project, what are also needs? You have the frameworks. Uh, the, uh, do you need special commitments? Um, it, it would also depend on who's involved in the project. Sometimes if it's at city level, yeah, can, national it, level, regional you level. To, well, you have to identify your stakeholders. I mean, okay. if you want to, uh, to develop something, you need trustful uh, uh, stakeholders who at the same time have a proven track record. Uh -huh. uh, um, otherwise, it's difficult, and this yeah. is linked also to corruption and yeah. to transparency and ca accountability. Yeah. Uh, um, especially if we talk about countries where the situation that we are trying to um, uh, to spearhead uh, um, is not the best one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Fleur, maybe the yes. parts of actors can already be in the second circle. Yeah. Because that is the actor circle. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm trying to include both of it. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so stakeholders, yeah, and also the, the timing. On, on um, in which we want to develop this project it has a huge implication on if we also apply for funding is uh, when when the funding is available sometimes we we need to also think of the duration of the project um if it's a short term project a uh, medium long term and and what is the definition of of the term that we're working and also within we're framing this project in a specific uh umbrella or if it's just another project that we just develop it and that's it, if it can be replicable as well? If we talk about platform and if we talk about uh, um, good practices, uh, um, we should we should consider also pilots that can be uh, yeah. that can be uh, implemented in other working environments and uh, <clears throat> geographic areas. Mm -hmm. um due to the uh, due to the good results yeah. and, and be adapted to the environment i think yeah. that's that's what we should looking for yeah and if we do that we think of replicable projects and also about sustainable projects that you know also yes. once they end they can also survive on their own and maybe you know you've also or the, the local communities have learned and then they can continue on their own because that's also a very crucial point on many projects that we start a project and then it ends the financing ends and there is no continuity. So we also need to think of the sustainability of the project without the funding that maybe we received originally. And yeah. I'm afraid we've got five minutes left. And the sustainability, again, Eva, it depends also who you select to be your actors. Of course. Mm -hmm. And I, and I just would like to add something in, at this point. Uh, local, uh, local stakeholders. It means uh, not just uh, uh, at a local level with the, with the uh, with the with the foreign partner. But for me, it means also to find local partners and local stakeholders within our own territories to ensure the reproducibility of the of the project itself. Mm -hmm. With, uh, for for example, uh, local authorities or associations, etc. I think the, 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 the idea of reciprocity is really important at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you also need to know your partners. That would be the ideal situation. Because yeah. the more you know, then the, the, the quicker you can start the project. So. OK, so we've got three minutes left. So, so, um, um, what will actors mean in okay. detail? Uh, because we put local stakeholders, and this is an example of uh, developing it. But what other actors, like, will you involve Ministry of Foreign Affairs? Will you involve citizens' right organization? Yes. Well, if you want to make it, if you um, lure, if you want to make it sustainable, then I then I propose also. I mean, you can't just uh, work within a local environment because the local environment is embedded into a central, uh, uh, let's say, in a central environment. Or it's in in a certain governance structure where you have a central government to to deal with. So. Uh, uh, in any case, I think it's very important to have uh, line ministries or whoever is responsible uh, 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 from the central uh, level um, on board, uh, yeah. because otherwise um, it's difficult that the activities or the measures will be recognized. Yeah, And ideally the national uh, associations as well? Which is not, it depends on what part of the world we're talking about. Sometimes there is no connection, there is no involvement of the national associations, but in those countries where that is feasible, we should really involve them from, from day one. And on a regular basis, not just uh, at the end of the project or at the beginning of the project, it's, we, we need to establish these dialogues and these uh, regular consultations. Um, okay, so about the stakeholders, do we need anyone else? We've got ministries, the associations, CSOs. The European because, Union. Yeah, well, the, it, it will depend who's finding, uh, sorry, financing the project. But if it's uh, the European delegations, maybe the EU delegations. The, yes. Is and this? The, yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah, and UN as well. Okay. But I think that the European the the European Union delegations can also be involved by any means, uh, because they will also have the uh, the knowledge of the of the local uh, territory. I think. Okay, and then I'm afraid we've got one minute left. And then we also need to think, Agita, you were saying that the approachable title for the project would be Stay With Me. So for you, what does it mean, staying with you? Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, a nice, it's a nice one. Yeah. 
it uh, came from what Joachim was telling about the idea that the people are leaving uh, the place, these remote places, and that's why I was thinking that he was more thinking maybe of the rural urban connections more to the rural. Okay. And um, the stay with me is uh, like um, <clears throat> sentence you are saying uh, to maybe to to young and prospective people who are searching for better places where to work. And they don't see this perspective at their native place. Mm-hmm. Okay. Of course, I, li- I like the title of the project. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And do we want to add any more content uh, to it before we move to the main room? Hmm? Maybe you can say the other. You need to go to the last circle, Eva. Yeah. The SDG circle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That that's a tricky one because people might say that these three SDGs are connected to the other ones. <laughs> But are there any SDGs so that you think we need to really make it? You can you can more specific. Green, uh, larger. Okay. Yeah. Or which ones you think that it would really need to absolutely link to to make it successful? Maybe each of you can say one SDG. <laughs> I would say seventeen, as always. Okay, good. Good choice. Agita, which one would be your preference? I would say 11. 11. Rodrigo? You can also repeat the ones have been said. Uh, I just said 17 as as always. Ah, Okay, sorry. It it was me, sorry. (laughs) Okay, so I hear 17, 11. Jonas? Yeah, 11 and 17 are also my two SDGs. uh, Okay. (laughs) Okay. <laughs> Good. And Nila? Akrimi? Okay. And Armel? I don't know if you can hear us. Yes, 17. Oh, 17, okay. And Stina? Hello, I'm, I'm sorry, I just joined <laughs> a little bit late. I, I was okay. hoping in, uh, uh, to look at this uh, next uh, session. Okay. So I no. wasn't participating in the group, sorry. Okay. Now we're the just same, making connections to other SDGs. On the our same project. goes with me, Ava. I, okay. was, I was going to go to the next next. Okay, session. no problem. But you, you will hear back, okay? And Joaquin, you're also saying number eight and ten? Okay. So we've got links to a specific eight, ten, eleven and seventeen SDGs. And for Nila and Stina, the name of a project is called um, Stay With You. Uh, st- sorry, Stay With Me. Okay, and the target group is uh, vulnerable, I mean, women and, and, and girls. We're also looking into rural areas and, and we will explain that uh, back in the plenary room. Okay. And we're also taking a look into climate aspects and, and cooking aspects and, and, and charcoal use of, of kitchens. Okay. And maybe Joaquin, you are also saying we can find a subtitle to make it clear. So any suggestions on how to make it clearer? So. No, just to explain a little bit, yep. you know, what uh, Agita um, uh, yeah. tried to wrap up with stay with me, you know, or stay, you know, a subtitle. Um, yep. Okay, we can think combating, of something. I don't know, combating, combating brain drain is one thing. Uh, um, Which one? Combating what, sorry? To, to, to fight brain drain, you know. Um, this is, brain this drain, is one. yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Eva, we need a reporter. Okay. So, who would like to be a reporter? Joaquim, Moagita, or Jonas, or Rodrigo, one of you? I talked already a lot. Agita okay. is very good. I say, Agita, what about, what about you? We, we can also support you, so you can start with the title and we will complement you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> the idea of your Kim, but we can together maybe. Okay. You can start saying the title and then we'll complement it. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. So now we come back to the other room. So thanks for your uh, contributions. Vamos para allá.
Is it? I believe we are. Do we start with which uh, group? Okay, maybe, maybe you know one by one. The first group was Eva and Lur. The second group was Boris and Amandil. Uh -huh. uh, so let's go yeah. for the second group. One second. We're changing rooms, but we've got Rapporteur Agita. We'll start and then Joaquin will continue and we'll complement. <laughs> okay, so you start then. Go ahead, Agita, please, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you for the possibility to introduce with our brand new project, which with the title Stay With Me. And uh, this, uh, the subtitle is um, still in the process of collaboration, but the idea is uh, that uh, uh, we would like to work um, on the urban and rural connections and uh, implement activities in order to um, stop the challenge of brain draining of young people leaving their um, native places, native uh, communities, and um, offering them uh, more possibilities to, to grow uh, intellectually and uh, to, to work and develop at, their, at the places where they are living at the moment, which are not specifically big uh, cities or larger towns. And uh, the SDGs we are concentrating on is uh, the fifth on gender equality. That's why we are putting a special target to the group of uh, girls and women regarding their education and awareness raising. There's the G13 on climate action, and I believe that it was the SDG 8. Yeah, on decent work and economic growth. And all these uh, so SDGs are interconnecting. Oh, creating opportunities to fight brain drain. Joachim is complimenting me. And actually, it was the, the idea of Joachim for which I just gave the title. <laughs> so thanks to Joachim, and he will also compliment me later. Um, and the eighth SDG goal is a, like the main target. So the idea of the project uh, to to give an opportunity for people to to live their lives as they would have dreamt. And um, the climate action is a like basis, as well as uh, without climate action, without uh, activities uh, meant to climate uh, mitigation, climate adaptation, uh, the progress is impossible. And as a horizontal priority, we have chosen uh, to put also digitalization as um, as well. Without this uh, horizontal priority, the progress is impossible as it goes together with innovations. Uh, the uh, uh, activities uh, are also interconnected with another SDG, it was SDG 11 on the sustainable communities and SDG 17 on cooperation because uh, nothing is impossible if you do it uh, you, you have to implement your activities together with somebody else, meaning internationally and locally, and there you can see the, the other stakeholders involved on the national level. These are land ministries and NGOs, relevant NGOs. Uh, likewise, uh, these are EU level players uh, like EU delegations and as well uh, UN and yeah, relevant UN bodies. Maybe Joachim, you can continue. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, one of the points that Eva mentioned also, uh, we should take into consideration the part of sustainability and sustainability from the very start uh, um, is, uh, is an issue that we need to consider uh, carefully if we uh, select the actors on the ground. So we want to have actors who are um, on the one hand, uh, let's say um, trustful, uh, with whom we can work. We need actors uh, uh, to be selected according to uh, certain criteria of transparency, of accountability, the counter act, especially in the regions where we implement such a project uh, where corruption uh, might be a, a very uh, important issue. And uh, on the other hand, um, as far as sustainability is concerned, uh, from the very start, uh, um, and I'm thinking now in the in the context of Platforma and, and our strategy, we sh should think also about pilots, pilots that are uh, going to be or should be uh, at the end, a good practice we can share, we can adapt in a different geographical uh, uh, environment and territory uh, without, uh, let's say, too many, uh, uh, too many problems uh, uh, to be faced. Um, 
And uh, thank you so much, Joachim. I'm so sorry to to have to interrupt you. Akita, it's I tried really it. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's just that uh, our colleagues uh, for the next panel are yeah, already okay. have already joined us. Sorry. Um, and we will uh, go to the next group. Um, and please. So I think it's our group, isn't it? My I mean, Boris and mine. So uh, please, Winnie, um, one minute uh, just on the to explain a little bit uh, our um, challenge <laughs> thank you very much okay no thank you very much for 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 the platform our project is trying to address a situation that we have in colombia with health issues and they also have challenges to ensure food security in the context of migration uh, so the name of the project is Ensuring Food Security for City 1 and City 2. And we are trying to address SDG 1, 11 and 3. One, addressing the issues of poverty and also fostering a um, partnership between City 1 and City 2. And also ensuring that there's good health and well-being uh, through the food that uh, will be provided. And the needs here are healthy food, which is grown locally. So we'll be encouraging people to grow their own food. We will strengthen the food production in, at a local level. And uh, the food will be affordable and also enhance urban planning for production and, and delivery of food. And we'll then, as municipalities, try and drive uh, local policies to support this goal that we have. And the actors in this are the communities in both cities, city one and city two, migrants, uh, people who are moving in from one city to the other. We're definitely going to need investors through funders, but local government will need to play a major for the growth of this food. And then we will need NGOs and S SCOs who will be representing uh, your women's group, youth group, people with disabilities. So all the vulnerable groups will be represented by these NGOs. We'll definitely need farmers who will be teaching uh, these communities on how to, to farm and get their own food. But again, we are not leaving uh, the businesses in the area out. We are saying they must assist their local government and we're going to need the education sector who will be teaching the communities on how to farm and farm sustainably. And the SDGs that we were looking at, uh, they're quite, uh, other than the three, they were quite vast. Num SDG number two, which is zero hunger, SDG number eight, SDG number 12, and also number 13 and 17, but also not leaving SDG number five, which is very crucial because the issue of equality is, is very important. But again, education here is key because you can't farm a, a sustainably if you, you don't have the know-how on how to do it. Thank you very much, my group, you can add. Thank you, I think it's super comprehensive. Thanks a lot for reflecting the, 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 the discussion. <laughs> um, shall we go to the third group? Jesse's group, I think, Jesse and Stans. Yes, it's correct. We were thrown out just before we assigned somebody, <laughs> but uh, I hope somebody will. Pascal from uh, came up with the idea. I don't know if she's still around. If not, maybe, maybe Carla. Take Vanessa. two minutes to yeah. summarize, and then we can start with the panel. Yeah. Just because I know that some of the panelists have to leave before the end, so um, just to allow some time for the. Yeah, Vanessa, would you be able to quickly uh, share? Tick tock, tick 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 tick. <laughs> We're in a very very nice mood. <laughs> I know, Carla. I think Carla is so it's a uh, ready. project on zero okay. waste. <laughs> is Vanessa talking or not? No, no Carla. Okay. Here no, you if you if you do it, it's better for me. No, you are so good. Okay, zero waste uh, by all. 
but uh, with the bees because we want to uh, organize project on food recycling, creating zero waste, uh, integrating urban gardens, uh, uh, protecting biodiversity uh, and uh, employing uh, the people that are more suffering inequalities. Bees are part of the project uh, and uh, we were looking for a cooperation south north or you know uh, in in with developing countries in any case our goals the 10 the second and the 12 our uh, needs uh, are of course uh, funding for sure um, understanding who are the targets of our project who are the ones suffering but also so we need to know what uh, kind of uh, actors we have uh, in the territory just to uh, coordinate our activity, uh, to know exactly what are the local policies, uh, and we need people with technical experience uh, uh, regarding the recycling activities and the technical ones. And so we want also to know the level of understanding of the SDGs in those countries and the sustainability of the project. Regarding in the actors, we have uh, plenty actors taking part of our project, uh, international networks, uh, um, uh, clubs uh, that are working on environmental issue, local university, landowners uh, for the recycling, unions, uh, the private uh, sector also, um, people working in the social services departments in the local authorities. And then we want also to integrate uh, this project with uh, the people that are already working uh, with uh, collecting neighborhood NGOs, everyone. We don't leave anyone behind. Uh, schools education is the next step uh, just to educate uh, uh, the new generation in uh, recycling and politicians are at our core of the project. Uh, and um, our goals uh, uh, linked to the project are number four, the gender equality, uh, the education, sorry, five uh, uh, for uh, uh, the equality, 15 to protect uh, the environment, the 11 because we are working in territorial community, so cities will benefit, 17 uh, partnership for goals, uh, 13, we are fighting uh, carbon emissions and so we, we think about also that and the eight for the um, uh, uh, yes the innovation the decent work yes for all thank you i'm taking over thank you very much to all those who participated actively big thanks to those who reported back and i think that we've seen all that the lists of goals that we can hit with one stone is very large but also we need lots of partners. We need lots of friends to accompany us uh, on the journey, uh, be it bicycle journey or be it preparation of the project. Uh, so I here will open the, the session, the third part of our training session. Who are we working with? So mobilizing multi-stakeholder territorial partnerships for decentralized cooperation. It will facilitate it again by our colleague, Lur Fernandez Salinas from Platforma. Lur, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. And I think that the sentence, we don't leave anyone behind, is a perfect transition for this uh, uh, part of the debate of the train of trainers. So I apologize for our guests, uh, who speakers who will join for the panel. Uh, we are a bit late, but I'm sure that uh, what you heard was also very interesting. So uh, the who, who are we working with? SDG 17, mobilizing territorial partnership for decentralized cooperation. Partnerships and who are going to be there, there for the magic words for the next 35 minutes. And before this, we will just uh, introduce the session with a short video, I think, on SDG 17, if it's working as an introduction. Yeah, there it go. We don't hear the sound. Okay, maybe Claudia, you can put it because something's happened with the sound of my computer. Thank you. But I think that if you turn on your sound of the, we can hear it. Okay. 
you learn everything. <laughs> Is your city an innovator, an enabler, a collaborator? Do you look beyond your boundaries? Decentralized cooperation is international development cooperation where local and regional governments share their unique potential to solve specific challenges. Their cooperation is critical to achieve the 2030 agenda and post-pandemic recovery. That is why SDG 17 is about partnership. So, what does this look like? In 1989, a Brazilian city initiated a process of participatory budgeting which inspired communities worldwide. Today, over 11,800 territories have taken up this practice, putting citizens' voices at the center. Yet, it is not only subnational governments investing significant resources. National governments, international organizations, private sector and academia are financially supporting this cooperation. Networking platforms and associations support thousands of leaders to connect on a variety of topics. They make local policies internationally visible. Decentralized cooperation is in the DNA of the international municipal movement. By combining strengths, local impacts are global impacts. No one and no place is left behind. Even through small projects, local communities feel our solidarity. For this, we need partnerships and an inclusive multilateral system. Join us. Share your stories. Let's celebrate the local solidarity. Wonderful. Thank you very much for sharing the video. And it resumes very well what we're going to uh, hear now, uh, because decentralized cooperation has a unique potential that is composed by a variety of factors that made this potential very rich. So to introduce the panel, we have three speakers. Um, and today in time, I'm going to present you uh, just very briefly. Uh, speaker one, so Karen Del Biondo, hello. I hope that you can hear us. Uh, nice to have you yeah. with us policy advisor in the Europe European Commission. So thank you for being here. Uh, second speaker will be Dr. Neila Krimi Kemperman, Senior Manager and Director of the International Center for Innovative Local Governments, if I'm not wrong, and VNG International. Thank you very much for joining. And third speaker will be Agita Kaukutsa, so advisor on EU issues from the Latvian Association of Local and Regional Governments. Uh, to structure this uh, panel, we are going to first uh, start with one question for you. So you have one minute. So this is really, uh, you share your thought, your very honest thought based on your experience and on uh, your, mm, yeah, your experience. So from your perspective, what makes SDG 17 powerful in helping mobilize and share knowledge, expertise, technologies, and financial resources to meaningfully support the achievement of the agenda in our local and regional governments? So it's a long question. Maybe I can also copy paste it by the chat. And okay. Thank you, Amandine. Uh, I copy paste it. So you have the question in the chat. You have one minute, each of you, uh, to reply to the question. Should I start? Um, yes. Thank you very much, Karen. Thanks. Um, yeah, uh, just to say that uh, I work uh, now in the unit responsible for Team Europe, but I used to be in the unit responsible for SDGs. Um, and uh, which is now a different unit, D2. And um, I heard that my colleague Carlos will be speaking tomorrow as the, at the SDG cluster. So he can tell you everything about what the EU is doing to implement the SDGs and uh, also how to report to the HLPF and these kind of things that I used to be working on. Uh, okay, so... Um, Obviously, uh, SDG 17 is key to implementing uh, the 2030 agenda. Uh, and uh, the EU, um, as Team Europe, as you know, is the, is, is the largest provider of, of ODA. Um, but the most important thing about SDG 17 is that it's more than just uh, ODA. Uh, of course, one uh, key element is the partnerships, uh, partnerships for the goals. Um, and 
uh, it's not by coincidence that uh, the commission, RDG, recently changed the name to uh, international partnerships to really strengthen this aspect. Um, and so yeah, partnerships with local governments, um, with civil society organizations, multilateral organizations, private sector, um, etc., et are really key in our cooperation. Um, but the other thing is that it goes beyond ODA, uh, even if we are a major ODA provider, um, to also touch on investments, trades, um, technology transfer, and so on. And here it's really, uh, this is the new approach uh, of the EU and the member states as Team Europe. Uh, so this is where the Team Europe uh, aspects come in to bring really the development banks also on board. Um, and, and the EU uh, with, with uh, EFSG+, Plus, uh, which you, you may know, the European um, Fund for Sustainable Development. Um, with the Global Gateway, we'll try to mobilize uh, 300 billion, uh, up to 300 billion in investments by uh, 2027. Uh, and this is also uh, fully aligned with the 2030 agenda. So uh, I will stop here because <laughs> I don't want to <laughs> speak, uh, uh, I probably already spoke more than one minute, uh, but we can uh, deepen this in the, in the next question. Thank, thank you very much. You will have also another question after, so thank you for these uh, replies. Um, so uh, following on this, what are the thoughts of the other two speakers on this question? Neila, Dr. Neila, maybe we can continue with you, if you agree. Yes, thank you. Thanks everybody for having me um, for UCLG and platform for organizing this. Good question, Laura. And one minute, I think it's really <laughs> very challenging in one minute to be able to answer this question. Um, actually, you know, from the perspective of an agency of international cooperation, the VNG International that I'm representing today and um, uh, managing international projects. There's always a wisdom in managing, and then we always told that the devil is in the detail. However, when it comes to governance, really the devil is in exclusion. And this is what makes the G7, SG17 very powerful, because it's about the different dynamics in the governance system. Being able to assess the partners, but also see the partners in their dynamics in relation with each other. And um, being able to define those partnerships, the potential, that's what makes this AGG very important because it goes really to the heart of governance system, inclusion, recognition, and also making sure that all different parties are uh, connected. And um, later on, I will have the, uh, the possibility to answer in more details about examples. But what I would like to say that in all the local government and regional government you know, scope of work, um, it is not acting as a free electron, you know, the French electron libre. They are really defined by their, def their definition in their relation with their partnerships, be it partners with civil society organization, be it partner with um, national government, be it partner with sister organization overseas, and this is where this internal cooperation is very important, or even with media or um, uh, local economic actors. So this SDG, I, I think my, personally is my favorite because it gives uh, recognition to the complexity to what governance systems are and um, making sure it is present in all the scope of our intervention, being as practitioners, as of municipalities, uh, local regional governments, that gives us that sensitivity to the potential that we can be uh, if we can see ourselves in interaction with those partners. Thank you very much for such insightful um, reply. And you have one minute and a half or two minutes even, but it was too strict with the one minute. So less isolated projects is also the, at the core of uh, SDG uh, 17. Thank you very much. And uh, what about the perspective from an association of local and regional governments, Agita? Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, the previous speaker for interesting uh, ideas for, for next thoughts and um, to answer the question I would uh, like to repeat the subtitle of this panel given by the organizers that uh, decentral cooperation is a 
colorful playground for SDG 17 with a lot of options and opportunities. And here I would like to start the opportunity to exchange with the experience of others, which makes like the soil for creating your own ideas to be implemented afterwards together through multi-stakeholder cooperation. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, for that, Akita. Uh, so now we have one question uh, in detail for each of you. Uh, so you have a bit more time. Uh, also, we should finalize something like 10, 15 minutes. But we also want to have at least five minutes for debate, I guess, uh, also for the other, for the rest of participants. So um, first question to Karen. Uh, so you were uh, citing also the Europe approach that is also based on uh, joint work with EU institutions, member states, and their implementing agencies. And as we are talking about partnerships, um, how do you see the collaboration with uh, local regional governments as relevant as a way of deepening this partnership for development? Thanks. Um... Just to warn you that there are works in my building and sometimes, yeah, it gets noisy, but I hope it will not happen in the next three minutes. <laughs> um, so, uh, yes, indeed, um, the Team Europe approach, um, the Team Europe members, they are the member states implementing agencies and the development banks. Um, but we see uh, that there is a lot of potential for the inclusion of local authorities. Um, it's already happening. Um, for example, in Malawi, in South Africa, we have uh, Flanders, which is cooperating uh, in the Team Europe initiatives. They are a full Team Europe member participating in the meetings. Um, they are also providing their own financial support. Um, this is also the case in La Réunion, uh, with La Réunion uh, in the Comores and Mauritius. Um, here, the it's with the indirect program, so it's with commission funding, but there's also one part which is uh, the, the own funding of the, of the local authorities. So um, there, these are just a few e examples, so there's not a lot. Um, however, we are very supportive of uh, linking the decentralized cooperation that the local uh, authorities have um with the TIs because we think that um of course SDG implementation has to be at the local level so um if you want the team Europe um initiatives to be successful um then uh, the the relevant programs uh, of the local authorities uh, should should definitely be be linked to that um I think particularly also in countries where there are not many um, Team Europe partners, um, not many member states, for example, um, and, and where there's actually difficulty in, um, yeah, in, in starting the, the Team Europe initiatives, but also in those where, where you have uh, already a lot of interest still, um, I think there, there is a lot of scope to, to link with the local governments. Um, which also for the for 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 the local authorities, it can provide visibility um, to be part of, of the Team Europe group and uh, the information sharing and the expertise that this brings. I think it's really a win-win. Um, my colleague Armel is also um, here. Um, we also have in the past supported decentralized cooperation with the, with the EU budget, um, with the, the Partnerships for Sustainable Cities program, um, but this is now moving to, to the geographical uh, envelopes um, uh, under the new, uh, the new MFF. Um, and we have uh, previously uh, done a presentation to the platform and members about what Team Europe is, uh, presenting also where you can find the information. So um, in case you have not been able, uh, maybe some of you have not been able to attend that, um, I mean, I'm happy that you, uh, to colleagues from platform has sent on the, the information, the presentation, and uh, yeah, also happy to, to follow up maybe in, in another meeting because we really think that there is still a lot of scope uh, to, to include the local governments better. Thanks. 
Thank you very much, Karen. And also there are comments in the chat from uh, Jesse, I see. So uh, after the questions on this state also to react on the part of debate for this, as you have interest in the comment, but also the experience on the ground. And uh, so thank you for the reply, um, Dr. Nela. So we can pass maybe to you also. My question to you is more on the strategy the mobilization strategy. So what has been the mobilization strategy to link the actors of the territory, including others than local regional governments, uh, to the cities? And how has this served to ensure the sustainability of the intervention, the project or policy? Thank yeah. you. Thanks a lot, Laura. Thanks also to Karen for giving this presentation on the Team Europe. And uh, I saw a very interesting question of Jesse also in the chat about um, how are we involved as local government uh, in, in the team Europe. And I think this is definitely an example also of mobilization of efforts. Um, I'm gonna start with that. Uh, I'm gonna start with this linkages that we are building um, with uh, um, actors who are believing in specific themes when it comes to decentralization or local governance or inclusive local governance and um, being connected also to the donor community and um, having the possibility either if we are a local government association, for example, from Europe member European countries, then once the information is available, there is definitely a way of mobilizing also embassies. And sometimes it comes also from our side when we inform uh, uh, our related embassy, European ones or others um, about this, uh, these possibilities. And, uh, um, and I, this also will bring me to this question of um, the connecting dot, you know, and the strategy is one. Um, in the video, um, we heard a lot of values, the solidarity uh, and uh, the co-sharing and everything. And, and I think this is definitely something that we work on and uh, in terms of mobilization, which is working on values. Um, when, it, when I just wasn't mentioning in the beginning in that minute, this idea of inclusiveness and the idea of connecting. And this is not something that comes um, you know, in, a, in a manual. It comes from believing that there is an added value of connecting to another partner. And with that recognition of the added value, then you build uh, uh, strong and sustainable partnerships. So this is why it's important that in every strategy of implementation of the SDGs, um, there is definitely mobilization of belief, common belief to the added value. And I would call that really the, the, the value part. And um, there's a lot of um, activities and a lot of tools that are definitely focusing on this value part. And one of them is the example of the city charter, for example, or, uh, uh, and which is most of the time um, hosted by association of municipalities. And that city charter really is charter of values of common uh, um, really common effort in a way, collective effort in a way. And in that um, charter of common values, then you define your partners and you define uh, in which way you involve your partners to achieve your goals. And your goals as an association of municipality or local or regional government is really to serve at the end of the day your citizens well. So in order to be able to serve that final objective, you need to you know, perform in partnerships and in performing in partnership, meaning that you that this to build that culture, institutional culture of partnership, institutional culture of um, co-sharing and, and collective effort and, and solidarity. Um, also, another definitely important strategy when it comes to um, mobilizing, you know, this collective efforts around uh, uh, this important SDG is really influencing in a way public policies. Um, when it comes to public po policies regarding local economic development or inclusive governance, for example, to provide much more space for um, um, gender equality or inclusive of youth, or even enhancing local economic development through stronger public-private partnerships. Um, this has to be definitely framed within the public policies. And those public policies can be on the national level as they can be definitely in the local level. And in those public policies, you enhance partnerships and you create either a legal or a social you know, framework 
where you um, uh, enhance these partnerships within uh, uh, an objective or strategy that you are targeting. And I can recall several projects um, uh, that are really enhancing these public policies um, based definitively on an assessment who are the partners and the dynamics between them. And then you build your public policies based on this, uh, on this reading of the added value of connecting with different partners. And another interesting example when it comes to uh, strategies, and sometimes it is sometimes overestimated or underestimated, is also the relation with media, for example. And um, this is an example of partnership um, that that serves a lot of strategical goals, you know, of local government, be it communication or outreach to population. And then uh, in that perspective, how you partner with media social media, public media, and how you can create really this strong collective efforts to serve the citizens. And there's a lot of examples to show that also this type of partnership could be definitely of use for your strategic goals as local or regional governments. And if I go back to um, the decentralized cooperation and the importance of it when it comes also to linking partners uh, around the world. And if this idea of collective effort is seen as really um, bringing partners in respect to each other added value from different parts of the world for a common goal. This will definitely impact also the spirit of decentralized cooperation. And we see that so much happening in, in the, uh, the type of projects we see in decentralized cooperation projects. So it's not anymore about you know, just um, uh, cozy visits. It's all about really having a common project together. So you see even this cooperation is based on a specific uh, objective that both partners are serving and they are connected to it, recognizing each um, added value to it in a collective effort. So this is what I wanted to share with you, Laura, in your question with strategies. I think strategies has definitely to work on the values of common understanding, the sharing and the solidarity and then try to translate that into either public policies or specific focus on specific partnerships, be it in this last cooperation or be it with media as an example. Of course, I can mention much more examples of partnerships, for example, with local economic actors. So, but these are all examples that are serving this idea of really enhancing partnership as a tool to serve at the end of the day, um, the population. Thank you very much. I think it was a very complete and detailed reply. I uh, use cited concrete examples, such as charters, also memorandum of understandings are a way to sustain about somehow these projects and complementarity between different levels of governments. Uh, thank you very much uh, for sharing your mobilization strategies with us. And now, um, Agita, so a question to you is uh, that indeed we have been saying that local governments associations are increasingly recognized as leaders in embracing the 2030 agenda. Uh, could you share with us the role of a local government association in creating and promoting such multi-level and multi-active partnerships for the localization of the SDGs? Um, yes, and uh, again, I would like to thank the previous uh, speaker about reminding why are we actually implementing all these activities and actions and this is uh, for our inhabitants, for, for inhabitants of uh, local communities. Um, in the question, uh, the, the question I have received, uh, there was a reference to the torch bearers. So I stick to, to the word torch, and uh, because there should always be the one who is leading the procession with a torch in the hand. And to my mind, the local government association is this leader, keeping the torch and showing the way, and the leading municipalities towards the direction of the localization of SDGs. And I see the whole process as the way itself. And by going this way, municipalities are constantly learning through different kinds of activities and experiences, enriching themselves and enriching the others with whom they are implementing these activities. And when thinking about the activities our association has implemented in cooperation with municipalities and other stakeholders, I can admit that uh, local governments association is well positioned to play the role of the coordinator at this level playing field. And here I would like to mention four key words, members, knowledge, information, and overview. As the association know, 
knows its members, local authorities. Secondly, it has the knowledge on the topic, SDGs. Thirdly, information on best practice examples implemented in other countries and exactly how was it done? What is the best practice? And the last one, the overview of potential stakeholders who might be involved in common activities with local authorities. And uh, to conclude, uh, I would say that development cooperation is integral part of this way I have mentioned. This is the way toward the localization of SDGs, both impacting the creation of partnerships and also at the same time influencing the development cooperation policy through the actions and projects implemented. Thank you. Thank you very much, Akita. Uh, indeed, it's good to remind that centralized cooperation can uh, create partnerships and that uh, these partnerships can indeed influence the creation of more partnerships. So it enters like a, a circle virtue, <laughs> if you know how to translate it in English. That is very good for decentralized cooperation. Virtuous. 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 Yeah. Thank you very much <laughs> for life translation. And so after these uh, very rich comments, thank you again, all the three of you for sharing your thought with us. Maybe we can open for five minutes uh, the debate a bit with the, with the rest of participants as we had the views from institutions and from associations. Maybe we could hear feedback from the city or a region. It could be a way of having uh, another point of view on which is the potential of decentralized cooperation and mobilize these multi-stakeholder and territorial uh, partnerships for sustainable development. Uh, you can also share the challenges. So again, I'm going to copy paste in the chat. What is the idea of the, uh, of the debate here? So if there is somebody willing to share the point of view of a city or region based on your members feedback as well, that will be a perfect moment to share um, yeah, that. Is someone trying to take the phone? Because I heard a uh, voice. Yes, Mercedes. Hi, thank you very much. Well, I'm not from a city, neither a region, I'm from an association, as many of you know. I just wanted to, um, well, to, 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 to give an example briefly uh, about what uh, um, the, the, the three speakers before have said. No? I mean, we started in 2018 uh, implementing the multi-level and multi-stakeholder uh, dialogues to agree on and to look for a, a, a local strategy for the implementation of the SDGs. So um, even now it looks like a, a, it's, very, it's, it's, it's very old or, uh, and it's, it has been happening all the time. That's not true. I mean, for our experience, we started in 2018 to talk about co-creation co of the agenda and the strategy and what I wanted to say is that uh, it started in 2018, and we are in 2022, and thanks to that uh, mobilization of the SDG 17s to promote a uh, partnership between uh, academy uh, at the different levels of government at national uh, at, at our national level level trade unions, academy, um, uh, civil society. Uh, Etc. Uh, I think that uh, we want. I mean, we could. Uh, we have now the representation that we have at national level when we are talking about the role of local government uh, for the localization of the SDGs. No. So I think that uh, it's as an example. We did, it was very hard <laughs> to work with that because it's very. It's not easy to put in the same table uh, different people from different, as you all know. But I think it's worth it. So I just wanted to share that it's hard, <laughs> but the root is stronger. And um, that helps us so, for the future. So that's, I wanted to, to share that with you. Thank you very much, Mercedes. Uh, I see that Rodrigo also, you want to share something with us, please? Yes, thank you. Uh, from, from the point of view of, uh, no, no, I'm not from a city, but from a urban community. Uh, I totally agree with uh, what Mercedes say. Uh, it's really um, with 
what we can see since we are uh, trying to put together uh, the centralized cooperation and the subject of SDGs is that we are actually uh, trying to build a common floor uh, not just for uh, raising, uh, raising awareness about uh, the importance of uh, decentralized cooperation, but uh, also to developing uh, public policies at the local level and um, raising awareness among uh, uh, elected representatives as well at the local level. I think that's really important for the de development of, of uh, public pol policies related to SDGs at a local level um, through the uh, through the, the actions we develop within the, the, the our decentralized cooperation programs. So I think it's really um, there's a lot of reciprocity between both. Thank you very much, Rodrigo. Very important to remind the importance of campaigns also uh, to federate this multi-stakeholder uh, approach in project. I see that other participants raised your hand. Uh, so, uh, Armel? Armel from INPA? Yes, hi. I just arrived at G2 sector, uh, local authorities in DG INPA. Pleased to meet all of you uh, just for this section. Um, I just would like just to say that uh, regarding the SEGs, um, when you are working on uh, decentralized cooperation, you, you are working with your partners, with elected people and technician coming from uh, territorial uh, ground. And what I mean is that it's very important to have the link, this link between the elected people from one local authorities and elected people from the other, other authorities and to work together on an integrated territorial approach. And either when you work on education, on health, on waste management, on most of uh, the territorial uh, policies, you work on SDGs for your own local authority. And you have to see how with your partners, this specific um, approach, which is a territorial approach for the population, for the persons who are living in, in, your, in your territory, can interest or not your partners in the third countries, and how you can uh, define with them um, in which HDG you think that your own local authority has got some specific in, uh, policies which can be very interesting for your partners and how your partners also can have some specific policies that can be useful for your population. And I think that at the beginning of each project or program, and I used to work in local authorities, so I know it, how it can work, um, this, uh, this discussion between elected persons between uh, from European local authorities and from um, the third countries uh, local authorities is very, very important because after you've got, okay, now you are the technician. So we agreed on this and this, and you can go on. And when you've got a common project all together, I think it might be much more easy after to see how with the EU delegation, you would like to work on a specific item regarding SDGs. And, and after our colleagues from the EU delegation are coming back to us and say, look, this is quite an interesting program. It's, it's, it, is, it can be linked to the MIP or to the action document we are working on right now. How maybe we can implement it with them, how we can facilitate it. And the discussion is going on. So uh, if if I if I'm doing this, um, there is quite um, this exercise is that as you know there is now a geographization which has been done in the DG INPA, and um, it doesn't mean that there is no any more co-funding, but it's another way to co-fund also some project which are supported by 
the European local authorities and the third countries uh, local authorities regarding how we can work together in another way uh, regarding also the EU delegate the EU policies uh, which has been um, implemented or, or which is going to be implemented in, in the country. Um, that's why I think it's very important for you to understand that we are at uh, G2 local sector, local uh, authority sector. Uh, we are in totally uh, linked with uh, the EU delegations and that we work every day with them to see how we can maybe uh, support uh, decentralization, support uh, the local authorities, support uh, also uh, local um, policies. And these local policies are extremely linked to uh, the SDGs. That's all. Thank you so much. But don't uh, forget at the beginning that the political meeting, the political interest is very important at the beginning. The political interest is very important at the beginning, and I'm sure that uh, the work that uh, Colleague Amundin is doing with the EU delegation and with the other partners is also very helpful for that, from going from a peer-to-peer -peer work, from technician to technician, from project to common approach to decentralized cooperation from the ground. Uh, so thank you very much for sharing with you uh, the view from the inside of INFA. And we will end uh, very briefly, uh, in, if possible in less than one minute, Daniela, because we are really out of time. So I'm very sorry for that. Um, I, you don't want to intervene? No, you have 10 seconds, 20 seconds if you want. No, and no, I, I, had, a, I had a point I wanted to say is that, um, and I know my colleague Sarah is so much keen on this learning thing. And I would like to say that, you know, the SDG um, of partnerships is something that's something that we can learn because so many partners, whoever they are, they consider that as an extra layer of complications. However, it is really definitely extra layer of recognizing potential. So, and I think this link, what Armel just mentioned about finding those connecting dots and finding the way to shape them into policies. And I would like to underline some of the work done by UCLG and CIB with policy papers towards this question of business cooperation and enhancing partnerships. And I think my colleague Jesse would also love to share that with you, Armel. That gives also a bit of insight also in relation with the European Union. That's what I wanted to say, Dora. That's it. Perfect. Thank you very much for the, for the reference. And so thank you for the speakers at the beginning of the panel. Thank you very much. And I give the floor back to Boris. Thank you. Thank you very much, Laura, and thank you very much for the distinguished speakers who shared a lot of interesting thoughts uh, and observations with us. Uh, and I think they will fall on a very fertile ground into our minds that are already filled with the ideas of the Agenda 2030, the SDGs, decentralized cooperation. We come to the last exercise of the afternoon. We'll try to make it short and quick so that we can keep up a little bit with the uh, agenda timing. Uh, so our last exercise is called Head of the Settlement. And I will invite Sarah to give us a very brief explanation about the exercise. Two minutes, Sarah, please. Sure, Boris. <laughs> and um, I hope you all get uh, ready to play with our the last half an hour we have left uh, of this first day. I know you, many of you like gaming, so we thought this is one insightful and make the click uh, game we have prepared for you. So I will give you the situation. You are all members of a poverty stroken informal settlement in Southeast Asia. So the head of the settlement has just been notified that eight parcels, uh, which are in the game several colors, has just been, um, have been generously made available uh, through the efforts of the twin city of Germany. Among them, there is an essential vaccine that needs to be moved into the refrigerator as a first possibilities. So this is a situation and you are the head. Well, we will need one uh, head of the settlement and we will also need four um, um, in each group, four other roles which we can say are colors. So there is a black color, you are the head of the settlement, 
the green color, which is um, the green was, I have to see the green was foot, I think. No, green is foot, yeah. The blue color is a medicine. The uh, purple is hygiene project products and the um, yellow is tools. So here you can see the fridge uh, in the middle. So there is one rule, uh, the, the black cannot enter in a space where are more than three already in. So just like in a game, you know, when you move the black dot towards the inner circle where you need to be because there's a refrigerator and you want the vaccine in the middle, there, there uh, are now four and you cannot be there uh, unless there are three or less. So what the head of the settlement now has to do is very, very quickly uh, try to order or to make the other four um, um, moving the dots so you can enter. Uh, every of of the uh, every of the five at each role has a specific um, limitation and possibility, and this will be communicated via the chat once you are in the breakout room. So we now go to breakout rooms, and then we will assign the different um, colors or tools, and then uh, each color will receive its personal instruction. And then we play and the head of the settlement has to leave uh, us in a space of 10 minutes maximum uh, to, get in, to get the vaccine ready uh, in, the, in the refrigeration. Is it clear? Please not. Seems so, yeah? So take it easy. We will go into breakout rooms. Any problem you can communicate to the trainer to the facilitator. We make a tour in the office in the meantime. <laughs> Sorry, we just need to change again. Okay. So this is a very funny exercise. Did you understood the, the game? Because sometimes the first time is not that easy. Uh, but we have Fernando here to help in any case. No, no, sí, ella me oye. No, que yo no les oigo, que no me han los estos. Okay, sorry, and now it's working. Uh, technical issues. <laughs> so, did you all receive the instructions uh, by the chat with the rules? No, we have to assign the who, who will be the black one, who will be the green one. Okay, okay, sorry. So we have to assign it between us. Okay, yeah. <laughs> sorry. And, and if you want, I can I can share via chat, but I will stop uh, sharing the screen for for everyone just to see their own uh, assignment. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 Can I have an assignment? So we, we could start with the black dot. I can share with you um, who would be the, the, the black dot that uh, are the vaccines, who wants to be the black dot. 
Stina, Rodrigo, Pablo, Jonas, you send randomly, okay? Pablo can be the black dot. Uh, Jonas, Jonas will be the black dot. Stina, the green one. Can you can you share the link again to the, the mural? Yes, just just sending the the assignments. Uh, Rodrigo will be the blue one. Okay, I don't have to. I don't have the link to the mural either. Okay, I will, I will just send the the link. Uh, Rodrigo, you. you already received the the blue one, right? The okay. Sign. Okay, so I believe we are only. I think Pablo, you didn't receive yet, right? So Pablo, you are receiving the purple one. And I will share the link to the mural now. With this information, there's no, uh, there are no many instructions of here, but you have to see the assignment and start communicating all the ways. Good luck. Fernando, how long, can you remind us how long we've got for this exercise? Considering uh, we are starting a bit late. Yes, normally we would have like 30 minutes, but now uh, less. So I would just, yeah, we'll just see what it, yeah, 15 would 15, be great. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just, just remembering you have to communicate and you, you have to move according to the instructions. You, you can just to move your own thing. You have to see the instructions and act accordingly. But maybe, Fernando, can we remind the instructions because maybe it's not 100% clear to everyone? Should I just read them again? So, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, because uh, it might not be easy the first time if you yes, play never before. Is. Communicate. So the black one is that you are the head of the settlement and you're responsible for leading the group and getting the vaccines to the refrigerator, to the center. That's the black one. The green one is food, and you can only take orders from the yellow one. Okay? So the green one only takes orders from the yellow one. Then the yellow are the tools, and you are the only one who can move the yellow dots. You can only react to messages sent over chat, and must wait to be asked to move the yellow dots. So the yellow dot has to wait until he she gets instructions in the chat the blue is medicines and you can move your dots only to the inner circle and upon request of the yellow participants so the blue one can only move if the yellow ones ask him to do so and only towards the center towards the refrigerator and the purple one is hygiene and you can only do what the green says Just to, to <laughs> we, we already sent this information uh, by chat via chat. Normally, okay. in theory, no, no it's one, not easy. It's not easy. Yeah, no, no one uh, can know.
the other assignments. So we we are we are playing openly here, <laughs> but it's good for you to know how the the game works. And please go go on according to the assignments we sent you by by chat that Eva uh, also read. No. You have to communicate. No, no other way. I'm, I'm communicating more than you. Just remember, you have to move the vaccine, the black dot, into the refrigerator. And for 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 this, you have to. Uh, I, I don't see any active communication on the mu mural. Does yeah. that mean that uh, I I need to have instructions through the chat uh, through the Zoom chat, or in, in any way? In any way, okay. Yeah. So you it might be on the mural in every way because okay. Yeah. Messages, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Fernando, the chat, the Zoom chat is the only place where people can get instructions from and passwords. No. It's like a role. No, no. You 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 some people they listen in one way, but some people they listen in another way. So you have to try to communicate with every dot every dot needs to to communicate with every others in every way. So to move the, the black dot to the center, for instance, you have to talk with the blue, the green, the, the purple, the yellow in every way. So you have to ask, you have to see if they can, how they can. Mm -hmm. It's like a role play. Imagine yeah. that you don't know what are the others and you want to move yourself. So what are the questions that you should ask? No, pueden hablar. We can just do it while talking. Yeah. There, there's just one thing I, I, I didn't there's no way you, you to understand is that yeah. Yeah. Just you said at the beginning that uh, the head of the settlement is the black dot, but on the mural is written uh, that the black dot is the vaccine. So I didn't understand yeah. that point. Yeah, the, the head of the settlement has the vaccine. And he needs to take this vaccine into the refrigerator of the village. So okay. for this, he needs to communicate with uh, the others that they have like the food, they, they can move the food, they can move the tools, they can move the hygiene products, they can move the medicine of the way for you to move your vaccine on the way to the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. But as the person that is the head of the set one and with the vaccine, you have to to communicate. So we move one circle at a time, right? Sorry. We move we move the black sir uh, the black dot one circle at a time, so it needs to move yeah. inside. Yeah, you have to you 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 have to in each circle is is it. It, it's possible to have only four dots yeah. in each circle. So you, for, for you to move the, the black dot inside, you have to take out the, the others. Yeah. But to take out the others, you have to ask them. And some of them, they only can move with demands from specific demands. So it's not only moving. They have to listen to others or in certain ways to, in order to move it's not only moving but According to in, the order, in order for the black dot to move from yeah. one circle to another there needs to be a uh, uh, one dot from each color right and then it can move from one circle to another yeah okay i understand but uh yeah maximum four dots in, in a circle yeah. So you have to take the, the dots out of the center to allow the black dot inside. Here, for instance, the blue circle was uh, in, in another circle. It has moved to the one on the dark circle, on the dark dot. 
But yeah, that was me. It was a mistake. Okay. It was it was yeah. you. Someone okay. asked you, like you you, you no. only yeah. So no, I was just testing the yeah. You you have to you have to wait for the instructions. Yeah, the the communication of others, but for you to move, the others need to communicate. I'm communicating a lot. <laughs> I'm the one communicating here. You have to talk. You, that's the <laughs> that's the game. You have to start talking and writing and doing whatever it needed to to move the, the black dot inside. Wow. <laughs> There are five dots in the second circle, so that we cannot have five. We cannot move to the second circle, yeah. So okay. one of the one, I don't... one in the second one has to move out. What well, two indeed for the black one to jump in. So one blue one should go away and one green and purple. Otherwise Eva is going to kick you out of the circle. <laughs> I don't even yeah. remember who is who. Yeah, yeah we black. can start with the head of the settlement. Who is the black one? Me, I'm black. Okay, Jonas, you have to take some of the dots there to 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 have a room to go inside. So start but asking people it, to get it, out of it. Can can yeah. people move to the outer circle where, where I am now? Because then there are four dots, which is not allowed. Yeah, yeah. The, the yellow one can give instructions, so the yellow one can ask the others to move away. So who's the yellow one? The yellow. <laughs> Neither Lou a... nor me are, are anyone. So who, who who wants to be yellow? Rodrigo, you want to be yellow? No, I was supposed to be blue. blue okay, and so... I don't remember who is supposed to give you to, to, to be giving you orders, but I'm not receiving any orders. Yeah, me chat, neither. Yeah. Me neither. Can you ask for order? Yeah. Yeah, you can ask for order, but <laughs> but it would not be good to, to say who needs to give you order. But you have to try. Uh, you have to try. Like Jonas, if I were you, for instance, yeah, I would yeah. ask everyone to get out of there, to, to get out of the inner circle. You have universal yeah, so, power, Jonas. Yeah, some of them will. To yeah, get some out of the inner circle. OK, everybody get out of the inner circle, please. And or not, yeah, yeah, be more specific, like blue, can you get out of there? Green, can you get up and so on? Okay, blue, green, yellow, purple, please get out of the inner circle. Some of them can, some of them can't listen to you. Some of them can, can, can go like this. You have to try other way of asking them, maybe in the chat. Yeah, because the, the blue dot can only move through to the inner circles. Yeah. So you the blue ones can't really move outside. So you can only, Rodrigo, you can only, with the two blue ones, you can only go to the center. Okay. So the blue one in this in the very inner circle will stay there. You can't go further okay. than that. I so can move my blue circle, OK. So the so... one right in the middle stays there. So and there probably. are other things there, like uh, you have you have uh, hygiene products inside the refrigerator, which is okay. not ideal too. You have to you don't need to put the hygiene products there. You have you can organize the thing. Also, okay. Not Stina, only the Stina's put in the chat as he would love to get another from the yellow one to move out. So someone give some order to Stina. With the yellow dot. Yellow is unidentified, it seems. Pablo, are you yellow? The yellow one maybe is waiting for something. <laughs> yes, right. So Stina is green, right? So yeah. Stina can only move if a yellow one asks her to do so. So any yellow volunteer can tell Stina what to do. Stina is green. She's waiting for orders from the yellow ones. But maybe, yeah, but maybe you were... <laughs> but, but maybe the, the yellow dot is waiting for instructions to get out as well. Yeah, and I think that we're, we're stuck there because Rodrigo can't go farther. Yeah. 
you have to try to communicate in every way, not only talk. How is your timer looking? I think we have to get back now. Just. Yes. I think, yeah, I think we have to get back. Yes, indeed. So then we can close this one and make the last evaluation mm -hmm. so that people can, can move quickly. Yeah, not easy, the communication game, if no one communicate. Mm. <laughs> so are we all back? Yeah, no, in 55 seconds, yeah. Yeah. We're just good. changing rooms again, so now we're back. So that's good. Thank, Thank you very much to all for the great exercise. Are we all back now? Thank you very much for the engagement. Thank you very much for your uh, for your playful uh, contribution uh, to this training. You see, even uh, if you know what's going on, it's not always easy. You need to find out the rules of the game ongoing and see how other partners communicate. It's really uh, an exercise which which we failed at first testing and only then learned how to how to do it. So, congratulations to those who had managed to move the vaccine in the center. Uh, and uh, I'm sure all those who didn't did a great job in trying uh, and probably died trying because the vaccines came late. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, thank you very much to all for your energy today, uh, for your contributions, uh, for your ability and willingness to speak, to contribute, to share your experience, share your um, uh, your your. Uh, what you experience uh, in your everyday life, in your everyday work. Uh, we have two very short items on the agenda for today. One is a short evaluation. So we'll do a quick evaluation and then one minute wrap up in the end to close up the training session. So we can proceed to the evaluation and I'm giving the floor to Fernando. Thank you very much, Boris. So please get your phone and go to menti.com and use the code 23828266 or you can on your laptop to please go on to the menti.com 23828266 okay we can Miggy. So, what did you like most about this first day of training? Thanks, my darling. Mm, bicycle game. Energy, very interesting, playful gaming, practicalities with learning and sharing, exchange, teamwork, alternance between lectures, debate, and games. Super. Energy, after all this, thank you very much. Balance between the content of the games, the games and dynamics, that's great. Maybe we can go to the next one, the organization. What did you find most challenging? Nothing. Time running, yeah, communicating. Yes, communicating is the most difficult one. Staying active, yeah. Exercise at the end, totally. It's, it's a challenge, but it's important to communicate. We will try uh, moving the dots. That's great. <laughs> the dots, yes, the dots, yeah. You, 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 
when you when you do your own training about it you you will like it <laughs> it's always difficult to do as participants the first time um okay the dots ah, the dots are the most challenging thing of the day <laughs> the next one we can we can go uh if you had to choose what would you give more weighting to in training so to the content of the module to the games and explanation of dynamics to the presentation of, of experiences to the change among uh, to the exchange among participants or to the reflections and advice for future trainings Content, presentation, and exchange. Now, presentation of experiences. Yes, it's also good for us too. So that this way we can uh, share with uh, others. Great. Thank you. I think we can pass you the next one. I think that's the last one, right? Uh, which exercise was your favorite? Would you be willing to replicate it? So we had three today. The bike, yes. The last game on communication, the SDG project, also the project. Yeah, so it's, we have a balance there. Yeah. See other signs, SDG project. Yeah, dots. Yeah, I think we are well balanced there. So yes, that's good to, to see that you uh, would be willing to replicate it too. Thank you very much and see you on the next one. Peace, Boris. Thank you very much uh, to Fernando. And I'm actually very pleased that the most difficult exercise, which is the dots actually found its fans uh, among our participants today because it apparently we like challenges. We go ahead to address them uh, and this is the best energy we can have also for the next session of the training. Please keep the level of the spirit, please keep the level of the energy and please as a reminder to all of you, you have a little homework to do for the next, uh, next part of the training which will take place on the 7th of June. It will be physical, so uh, hopefully we'll have an opportunity to meet all together uh, and see, uh, move some dots, uh, maybe physically on the paper. But please have a look at chapter three and chapter four of, uh, of your manuals. Um, have a look really on the content, do a quick briefing. It shouldn't really take a lot of time, but that means you will come prepared for the next session of the training. And we will do a very, very, very short evaluation at the beginning so that we check if you did your homework or not. So this is our pedagogical approach. Uh, and with here, I would like to thank all the colleagues that participated, not only the participants, the trainees who had been excellent and will hopefully become trainers in the future. But great thanks to the Platforma team, uh, to, our, to my colleague who participated today, Eva Lur Amandin, uh, but also to colleagues from the UCLG Learning, Sara, Maria Alejandra, uh, Fernando, uh, Claudia, and all those that contributed to the success. Thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you for your patience because it's a long session, but in the end, I see smiles on your, on your faces, even in the Zoom. So I think even the long session and tiresome session still uh, resulted in positive memories and positive energy you're taking home after today's session. Thank you very much to all. Thank you very much for coming and see you soon next week. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, bye-bye. Thank, Thank, Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.